shot. Oh, I thought that was Sand Hill Shooter. Oh, we That's got Sand Hill Shot going on in the house. Oh, man. Wow, we are a, a rowdy group this morning. We're <clears throat> we're warming up our vocal cords this morning. I think we're going to do some singing here pretty soon. Hey, I'm seeing that we're live over on the YouTube side. We got we got a rowdy group today. Everybody sees the sub three hundred fifty dollar gun topic for today, and then everybody's like, "I'm all in on this one." So, no, good morning, everybody. What's that, Rich? What, they want to see what guns are still sub three hundred at this. Point. You will be surprised. <laughs> I was very surprised. I'm shocked at what stuff is selling for, but I'm also surprised at what's actually available out there. So this is going to be a good one for everybody. And if you end up buying something because of this episode, I have people that routinely email me and say, "Thanks, man, because of you, I went and bought a black powder rifle yesterday." It's like, sorry, dude. That's 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 why I'm here. I'm here to help you find a good deal. So anybody, anybody, anyway. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Caliber Corner, episode number one hundred and fifty-one. Where today. We are just talking about sub $350 pistols, revolvers, handguns. We're going to see if we can find something for you amidst the uh, the, the the panic buying that's going on out there. And, uh, you know, I got to be honest with you guys. I went to a pretty cool gun store yesterday in Lincoln. I was just looking around, and they were stocked really well. They had a lot of good firearms in there. Of course, the majority of what I saw was was above $350. Lots of Glocks and SIGs, you know, m and Smith & Wessons. If you don't mind getting into the $500 and above price point, which maybe we need to talk about at some point in the future, you can get a pretty good selection because you're not seeing those prices really going up, you know, like Glocks and SIGs and M&Ps. They're, they're selling for their MSRP. But what was those discounted cheaper guns are now really creeping up in price, sometimes, you know, going up 50 or or $100 from what we paid before. So anyway, before we get into that discussion, let's go ahead and uh, let the panel introduce themselves. Quick reminder, today's episode is brought to you courtesy of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Guys, go over to SS Pond. They're open Monday through Thursday, 11 to 7, uh, just off the Interstate 80, 80 exit going into Lexington, Nebraska. The pawn shop's on the right side. Stop in there. Say hello to Stan, and SS Pond will take care of your firearms needs. All right, so joining us today, he's on the road. Black Cat Outdoors, how's it going, brother? How you doing, man? Good, how are you doing? Uh, good morning, Grant. Doing good. What you been up to lately, man? Oh, same crap, different time. Just got back from doing some hiking and camping on my vacation, and now I'm back to driving around in the truck here. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So you're staying busy. You're staying busy. You got? Are you still hosting any shows? Any live shows at all? Do you got any episodes going on? Or are you just you just kind of a busy man right now? I, I haven't been doing like a regular scheduled live show lately. Yeah. I'm gonna try and get back to doing like Tuesday, like I used to do here at some point. It's just been I've been really busy between work and doing some stuff around my house that it's kind of been tough to yeah. get that going. But yeah. like I said, I'm gonna try and get back to it. I do kind of just impromptu chats when I'm out grilling dinner sometimes but <laughs> oh yeah 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 I, I still put videos out so i just put out like a backpack review yesterday i think it was so i have cool. some stuff coming out just i took I, a little bit I, of a break on vacation and i've been trying to break it from my live schedule for a little bit i didn't get to see the video on the backpack did you use that for the camping trip yeah i've been using that one most of the summer actually mm, mm. and it's a cheap i wanted to put it out because it's like a real real budget i mean it's like you know, you're talking it's a 47 liter pack which is a decent size for like 34 dollars is it uh <laughs> high sierra or ozark trail or what brand is it's, it it's uh outdoor products which they make they make stuff for different companies that one you can get that one at walmart or on amazon like a bunch of different places i actually have a more expensive one that they make that i haven't okay. reviewed yet because i haven't really used it a whole lot but it's a little bit bigger of a pack. I'll do, uh, maybe I'll do like a like a quick video on that one of these days. You can see like kind of, the, I want to do a couple of trips with it and then compare that one to, for what you're getting for like $100 versus what you're getting for a real cheap pack, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, backpacks can go anywhere. If you're looking at an actual backpacking backpack, you're talking anywhere from super cheap to four or five hundred dollars yeah you can spend you get a kelty or a north face i mean you can spend whatever you yeah. want on a backpack literally i mean the sky's the limit yeah. on anything but like it's crazy to think you can get a nice you know well-built 40 dollar walmart backpack it might not be as light as the 500 hundred dollar north face but you might have just yeah. as much utility as much storage space you know ykk zippers you know i mean which is yeah. interesting i'm gonna check your video out because i'm in the market for like a bit of a bug out bag just something a little bit nicer than what i'm running right now yeah, so, that would uh, probably work as a bug out bag. I mean, it's decent size. I mean, it 
Sure. It holds everything you would need for, you know, a day or two on the trail. If you pack super light, you could probably go several days with it. But mm -hmm. I, like I, I said it in the video, I don't know if I trusted to do something like a, you know, it's not something I take for like a long through hike because I don't know if I would trust it the whole way mm -hmm. or I don't know if I'd want to carry it for, you know, a month or something. You know what yeah. I mean? If you're, yeah, doing, you know, you make you're it not going to hike the AT with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. For most people that are just doing like overnights or two day, you know, hikes and coffee stuff yeah. like that, it works. All right, man. Nine strikes got his coffee. Cool, Black Cat. We will check out that right. review. Uh, Rich White is with us. Rich, what do you know, man? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? We're doing good. So, so, uh, so you got a little show that you do. Why don't you let us know about this show? What, what, what's it all about? Yeah, it's uh, this week unloaded. It's on the Unloaded Media channel. You never know what we're going to talk about. Very rarely do we have an actual set topic for the show. We just come up with whatever off the top of our heads. And so it's it's like it's a hit or miss Tuesday nights at nine o'clock, right? That's what you're saying. No, we're so, better. So it's, or is it always a hit? Is it always a hit? It's always a hit. We don't. Miss. It's always a hit. That's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I appreciate you being here, Rich. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. On your channel, you got anything coming up? Any reviews or any spoilers for us at all? Uh, well, they got that uh, if I can have only one gun thing going around, and I was yeah. challenged to that yesterday by King. Did you catch that too? <laughs> yeah, I got to put gotta a video together. together. Probably do that sometime this weekend, and so put that up over on the Unloaded Media channel as well. That, so. that can be a hard one because I'm like, okay, like if I only had one, do I, do I want to go the pistol route because, you know, the concealability and like a SHGF situation, you want to kind of not the gray man, but kind of be the one that nobody pays attention to, or do you want to rock the M4? Or do you want to get out there with the AK if it's, you know, that bad? You know, what is that one? And so that, that was actually, I mean, I sat there and debated for, I was walking the dog at 45 minutes. Do I want to do this one? No, maybe I'll do that one. No, I don't want to do the Glock. No. So I went ahead and just did the SR-1911. But Yeah, I, I started thinking about it as soon as I saw those being put up because I knew somebody was going to challenge me to it. And I figured it probably would have been Kingpin or somebody along those lines. And yeah, I was right. Kingpin's the one that I was going to say, it. so who sent the challenge out to you? So yeah. <laughs> Sweet, uh, man. All yeah, right. I already got something in mind that I'm going to do. Cool, cool. And joining us, cup of coffee in hand, is Night Strike. Night Strike, good morning. Isn't this past your bedtime? Shouldn't you be sleeping right now? I should be in I should be in bed cool. considering it's my holiday. It's your holiday. It's your yeah. <clears throat> what's your holiday, Night Strike? My birthday. Mm. Isn't right, everyone's ready? birthday their holiday? Me, 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 me. Here we go. <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Night Strike. Happy birthday to you. I swear we are sober. Okay. All right. So, Night Strike today, Night Strike is 37 years old. <laughs> no, it's like a, it's like a, a three amigos, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Night Strike, how old are you today? Are you are you 19, 20? I'm 37. No, I was just guessing. I had no idea. Seriously? No, you, you, seriously, wow. you, you got it right. We were so little when we started Caliber Corn. I remember you just this tall. You're just this tall. I, just, I know. I, I know. I know. No face hair. Sure. You could even grow a beard at that point. No, I could grow a beard at that point. <laughs> now, he's getting, now he's getting hair in funny places and starting to get No, no, no. no. I, I've been he's able to grow a beard. He's watching videos on YouTube now. He's actually considering, you know, and waxing. Yeah. Give yeah. him a battle axe and he can go for as a dwarf for Halloween. Come on, he's been throwing that beard. No, since no, three. okay. L listen, <laughs> I'm not as short as Clover. I can't fit the dwarf person. He would. Nicer, uh, like, like, get your dryer up for Halloween, Halloween man. Nicer, take the hair off on the top and grow out the beard and get your get your monk robe on and have your your bow staff. You know, <laughs> fire tuck, man. I'm telling you, that's where a we're Gimli at. You know, we need to get him a Gimli costume. Okay. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Dude, there's a lot of possibility. <laughs> now, who's that guy from Harry Potter? You know, you know, Travis, I was called out for the uh for, for the one gun challenge too, mm -hmm. and I haven't done it yet because yeah, I no. haven't received my one gun yet. I know, and, and it's no rush, dude. It's no rush, but no, I no, no, no. come up with. Yeah, no, that, that's the point, Travis. I haven't received my one I know, gun yet. I know, but you're gonna make the video as soon as you get it, correct? Right, yeah. Okay, good, good. Well, I'm going to hold you accountable for it, so you got to get... <laughs> yeah, I know. Sweet, I know. I'm, sweet. I'm bad about doing videos. I, I'd speaking, rather just do live stuff. Speaking of Night Strike, speaking of live stuff, what is the show that you do that, that you want everybody to check out? Well, the, the, the show that I am shocked and insulted by Rich White, but that's no surprise. Uh, 
Yeah, it's hit or miss Tuesday nights, 9 o'clock. I also do the Friday night strike at 6 Eastern, 5 Five Central, and you figure it out for Pacific. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do a math for you. You guys, you guys got to do some work. And uh, I've been toying around with doing a Thursday show too at seven. Oh, okay. I saw you did a Thursday Thursday night strike. Yeah, but... it, 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 it's just, it's and... just there's nothing going on around that time. And I figure, you know what? If nobody's doing anything, might as well. Well, that's why I'm doing this show right now. I mean, who else wants to get up and listen at this time of the morning? You know, I mean, honestly, okay. So there's like five. Well, Mondays was a good night for you too. <laughs> yeah, and I and I liked it, but I only did that because of the schedule because I had to commute on the weekend, so I didn't have a chance. Right, right. Around. And then right now, I'm just sleep is a priority. Eventually, mm-hmm. when I kind of get things, you know, under my belt and and where I want them, then I will be joining a lot more of the evening podcast. Yeah. Right now, well, nine thirty rolls around, man. So I'm out. So I, I have to, I have to call you out, Travis. When am I going to get my unofficial co-host back? Well, like I just you said, know what, I, know what, it, it's going to take me some time. But uh, once I feel feel why don't we just confident. go ahead and call him out yeah. and just say that you are now the official co-host of Hit or Miss. Mm. He's been gone you, for too long. You can long. have a stand in, but I'll be back to reclaim the throne at some point. So it's you know, I don't know when. I mean, I, I want to, but like I said, it's 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 a long day for me. And eight, nine thirty, ten o'clock rolls around, man. I'm just and I know you go at eight. Uh-huh. But I'm usually working on planning and stuff for the next day, so that's why it's I I, it'll it'll get there. It'll get. There. I mean, man, I was with you guys the whole summer, rocking out at last year yeah, on three. I know, I, I know you were. You it's know. just you know you it's, were sorely it's, missed, and I missed it too. But I I will be back. I will be back in the evenings. I will. So, mm. all right, okay, moving on. We got single shot with us. Single shot. What's new in your world, brother? How you doing? Oh, not too bad. I'm in uh, New Hampshire right now, getting rained on. Ooh, ooh, oh, ooh. getting a little bit of rain it's, here. It's been cooling but, down there a little bit because it's just been oh, yeah. kind of beastly out here in Nebraska. We've been in the upper 90s and humid, so except this morning's really nice, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's uncomfortable. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm headed. I'm headed home after uh, I get things going there this morning myself, and uh, I'm gonna have a few days up there, and cool. Then I'm gonna think about trying to get a couple of videos out myself i can't uh, i can't do anything live yet uh, so my yeah. channel's not that big yet yeah but uh you know, i'm gonna work on it i've got a Ooh. couple plans in mind so we'll and your channel there. your channel name is single shot is that correct that's correct yes with an exclamation point yep all right so guys make sure you check out that channel once you guys head over there and subscribe be a part of the fun get in on it mash that bell Let's get let's get you up to a thousand subs, right? That would be nice. Let's do it. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. Let's, let's get me another thousand while we're at it too. Hey, here you go, buddy. There we go. There we go. Let's let's beef up knife strike. Let's get him up there. <gasps> Gizzard Gary's with the Gizzard. I just saw that. Either I just about died, or I saw Gizzard Gary for one split second there. I don't know. I, know. I, I know. saw the light. I started going towards the light, and then I was pulled back away. Gizzard Gary, what's going on this morning? How's the tactical what? rooster doing today? You don't want that camera on, man. <laughs> not this pre, time in the morning. You don't want pre, pre coffee. Gizzard Gary is out. This I, saw, I saw that Instagram picture the other day. He's not kidding. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. He just needs a little more sunlight. That's all. The rooster needs to get outside. You need to be more free range, Gary. You need to be more. He free does. Range. He needs That's to be more free range. It's free rain, range. Uh, raining outside right now. Yeah, you guys are catching. I saw that. You guys are directly south of us. It's going across Kansas right now. There's a pretty good storm that you guys got. At least it's cooling yeah. down. It's like sixty something out and nice out, and overcast. It's beautiful. It's perfect weather to go out to the range today. Is what it is. Yeah, sixty nine degrees. It ain't bad at all. No, not for you guys. You tend to be a little bit warmer than us, too. I know, just kind of in the summertime. It's a little bit different down in Kansas. But uh, yeah. So, Gary, what's, what's what's new, man? What you been up to lately? You're putting out a lot of great videos on your channel. Oh, thank you. Oh, what have I been up to? Well, I don't know. I mean, I've been busy because, uh, well, the guys told me I need to get in gear and actually put out some content. So, uh, And I've been buying some guns. So, uh, mm-hmm. having some some neat stuff to do content with, but uh, I had quite a bit of fun with that uh, LCRX last mm-hmm. weekend at the range. I just I had never owned anything really much in twenty two Magnum, and I wanted something I could take to the range. I'll shoot about anything at this point if it'll shoot ammo that I can buy. You know what I? <laughs> can you find you can find twenty two Mag? 
plentifully, right? I mean, they even have 22 mag at Walmart, of all things. They don't have any 22 LR at our Walmart anymore, but they do have 22 mag. So Oops, can you find sorry it? about that. Uh oh, copyright oh. strike. Uh oh, it's okay. I'm not monetized. Go ahead. Alarm going off. Uh, I will. Yeah, Walmart normally has some. It's kind of. Uh, and uh, apologies tonight, strike. It's kind of hit or miss. You know, sometimes you can see it in Walmart. Sometimes somebody else bought it. Uh, Gary, do you guys have do you guys have Orsland's down there? Uh, farm supply yeah. store. Okay, yeah. they have ammo. They usually carry um, Rock on Armory twenty two Magnum, which I've shot in a Keltec and then also in a few revolvers, and it's fine. Um, and that's it's not that expensive. If you just need it, you can't find it. I go to Orsland's and buy it because they usually have they'll generally have something in stock. Not so much nine millimeter, but uh, check Orsland's in their little gun case over by the register. If they sell ammo at your Orsland's, I don't know. Um. Well, the only one I've been in didn't, but I haven't been in all of them by any means. So do yeah. ask and see. They usually have. They actually have a decent like hunting section that pops up like in the fall. They get a lot of camo stuff in, a lot of accessories. They have a dedicated like gun cleaning section where you can buy gun cleaning supplies and stuff. I was in Targets and stuff. So a lot of people don't even realize that they just tend to go to you know your big your big box stores and stuff. But um, yeah, farm supply stores are a good place to go if you just need just the basics. So. But as far as twenty two LR, I was able to pick up a uh, brick of it in my uh, in my gun shop here in town yesterday. So forty eight yeah. for it, but for what was it? How many rounds? Five hundred. Oh man, that's the, about double, isn't it? For the Agula Super Extra. Mm -hmm. There's a couple places here locally, and I'm not going to call them out, although I should. They're selling uh, fifty round boxes of Federal Nine for twenty eight dollars. Uh, come on, unless their supply, unless their suppliers are jacking up the price, that's triple what we were paying. But for somebody who needs it, for somebody who wants it, I guess you don't have a lot of choice, you know. That's true. Yeah. That's true. All right. So real quick, let's see who's joining us over on the YouTube side. We got a little Patriot in the Dark going on. We got a little Georgia Trucker 69. Night Strikes out there. Night Strikes over here. Tacos and French Fries. Justin Gibbon. Snake Doctor 78. Defense Dad's out there. SS Pond in the house. By the way, Stan, I've got a complete lower coming from uh, Palmetto State Armory. So give me a holler when that shows up. Uh, fluffy 10 millimeter Jeep guy. Mike John Lowell's out there. Nighthawk Medic. And you guys are chatting about everything today. Fluffy 10 millimeter Jeep guy. Ecoat is out there. Uh, Jason Stewart's rocking it. Rich White's pulling double duty over there and over here. Drusifer, two live moo, two live, two live moo. David Sotore is out there. Tim Naden's joining us. Scott P79. Mike's out there. Good morning, Mike. Black Hat Outdoors is over there and over here. We've got a little Aaron Mortensen going on. So the topic for today, I was going to discuss, you know, black powder, you know, cap and ball revolvers, but I need to educate myself a little bit more on that. I was pleasantly surprised with the supply section at our local Shield Sporting Goods store. They had powders, they had primers, they had, you know, bullets, musket balls, whatever. They had everything that you would need for black powder. So that was good to see that I can get that stuff and it's really close by. So when I finally do break down and get my uh, my, my flintlock rifle or my black powder rifle or whatever I decide to go with, um, it's good to know that I can actually get the the supplies that I need. So, uh, But today's topic is, is the sub $350 firearm pistol revolver. We're pretty much going to focus on uh, pistols, handguns. And uh, that's just because when you're going locally, and you can kind of find, you know, a few items, but then it seems like all that's available are, are handguns that are running $500, $550 and more. So what we'll do is just kind of go through the listings and see what's actually for sale. And I'm just using Gun Broker. I clicked on the buy it now option. I limited the price to $350. And I was pleasantly surprised with what's available out there. Um, real quick, there were some solid suggestions already coming out there from the YouTube side. Uh, where's that at? This, a few people were mentioning that you can occasionally get the IWI Masada for three forty nine dollars if you're patient. I know they're running for three ninety nine dollars locally here. Uh, what else do we have? The SAR guns are fine. Um, they are Turkish made, but again, when it comes to buying where your guns are coming from, you got to choose your battles. But honestly, the SAR is based off the CZ-75 design. The EA witnesses are almost identical to the SAR pistols, like the frames and everything. They're good guns. I had an old um, EAA uh, Witness P which was the polymer midsize that they sold back in the 90s, and it was a great pistol. Uh, what else do we have out there? The BB Tex BB6, the Canic TP9 Elite SF, even just the, the Canic uh, TP9 SF, those were around 299 at one point. Uh, again, another Turkish-made gun, but you, you, you buy whatever you want to buy, you know, and I'm not going to police you on that. Um, so let's just throw it out there. What are some suggestions that you guys are seeing locally? I'm going to run this around the panel. Let me know if you've seen anything in terms of handguns under 350 that you're still finding in stock. 
Gary, I want to start off with you. What can you find locally in the Kansas area? What 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 are you seeing? Anything? Oh, if you're lucky enough to find one, you can still occasionally see the uh, the Taurus G3 G3C. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're out there. Mm. Uh, they don't stay on the shelves long. Yeah, but I get into my gun shop about once a week and. You will occasionally see one there, and I mean, those are there, your uh, skies. Yeah. They're still on the shelves a lot of times. Uh, now, if you want to go revolver-wise, uh, I always see Heritage Rough Riders. Yeah, that's that's a lot of what we're going to see when we start scanning. Um, does Taurus make a $350 revolver or not? Did they make a 38 special? That's $349. The, the Poly Protector, you might be able to pick one of those up for $349. Those are chambered in $357 mag slash 38 special. It seems like the old 85 was right around that price range. Okay. Watch for then, now the 856. Is that right? I know they sometimes need a little bit of work, but the Rock Island Armory 38 specials, I think those were like 249, 250 at one point. Expect oh. to pay, you know, the prices you were paying six months ago, just add 50 to $100 to it and don't be shocked. That's what I'm seeing in all the stores I'm looking at. Like right now, I've got an EC9S sitting right next to me. And I paid 220 for it. And this, this, the shop I stopped in last night was 299. But you can get one if a person needs something. You know, at least you know you can still find one. Um, you were talking about the G series here locally. The Shields carries the G3s for two ninety nine, and they have the G3Cs for two sixty nine or two fifty nine. If you want to go stainless or if you want to go matte, uh, mm-hmm. and then obviously you can still get the PT one eleven G2s. Well, not those. You can get the G2Cs and the G2Ss. Sure. I recommend the G3 because, in my opinion, the trigger is way better. Yeah, the G3Cs um, are out now, so I, yeah. I don't know if I would go with the older ones with the G3s. You know. I had many PT-111 G2s, and I've got family that have G2Cs, and they're fine, but the trigger, it, it's fine. It's fine, but it it's 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 a weird trigger, um, and you can get used to it, but I like the G3 because the trigger feels, it has more of a defined wall, and it's a shorter pull. as It has a more defined kind of break to it. It doesn't pull back quite as far as the old G2Cs, so I'm waiting for, so Gary, you always see this first, and you always send me the emails, so thank you. For some mm-hmm. reason, my Taurus emails always go to spam, and I never marked them that way. So I don't yeah. ever see it until you send me. I want to know when they come out with an OD Green G3C. When they do, you let me know, and I'm going to go buy one, okay? You got a deal. Yeah, I like because I'm Taurus always comes out with the different frames like three months later. Usually within three months, they got FDE. They'll come out with purple, robin egg blue. Uh, God knows whatever, you know, they'll whatever. The, usually the OD Greens will come out because I wanted a G2C and OD Green, and I can get one, but now that the G3s are out, and they got the G3s and OD green and stealth gray and black and stainless, you know. Um, but yeah, if you ever see, if you guys, anybody ever sees an OD green G3C, let me know. I've been looking around. So, um, so Georgia Trucker 69 says uh, suppliers are charging more. My favorite gun shop got some nine millimeters. That is $25 due to their costs. The owner told me one time that he makes four bucks a box. Okay. So it's just a cycle that's going around. Um, but we'll go around. Let's go and continue about the 350. And then I'll make a few more comments about gun prices. Single shot out in your neck of the woods, East coast. Can you get a handgun for $350 legally or less? Oh yeah. Yeah. We've got the skies and the rough, right? <coughs> rough riders. And, uh, of course, uh, I don't know if you're looking into the uh, or talking about the used market. There's quite a few of those up there as well. But pretty much for the most part, that's what I've been seeing is the skies and the uh, rough riders. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you can usually get your shields, your your shield shield Gen ones or shield you know your smaller compact shields for three fifty. I know some places are going three ninety nine. They were at one point. I think we saw shields as low as what two sixty nine, two forty nine, like around. Uh, Black Friday and stuff, you know, or Memorial Sale deals, deals and stuff like that. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was seriously considering one of those skies myself uh, after seeing some of the. Uh, the don't, do it. don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do All right, it. let's okay. let, let's just get this. Okay, so I have a lot of people that comment on my videos, and they say that they've they've bought them recently and they haven't had any problems. I'm like, well, how many rounds have you put down the pipe? You know, and oh, I have five, seven, eight hundred rounds, no problems. Okay, maybe they've improved quality a little bit. I had three. They all had issues. You guys know my history about that. I'm not going to go into it. If you need something, if you're staring at the gun case and all they have are CPX twos, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're, well, Travis P11 says it's a piece of crap. It'll fire. It'll run, but be ready for frame pins that walk out, possibility of a cracked frame, uh, possibility of trigger springs breaking. Just don't make it a high mileage gun. I mean, I know I want you to practice with it. Maybe buy a second one and kind of make that your range beater. Um, 
because I just don't think they're designed to handle a high round count, even though they boast about the engineering and the quality and the technology that goes into it. And they've got good aluminum frame frames and barrel or good slides and barrels. But, you know, I would rather have you have something than nothing. If you have to choose between that and nothing, just get it. So you have something, but they have a heavy trigger that takes time to get used to. Um, they are a little painful to shoot because the shock goes right into your palm. I mean, that little shock thing they put on the back doesn't really do anything. But, uh, yeah, they are available. I'd rather have somebody get that. Or if you hold out, they do have the DXG1 coming out pretty soon, which is their their redesign of the CPX2, which they showed it at SHOT Show last year. I've yet to actually see one in real life, but I'm sure they're probably out there. Okay, who makes that one? Sky. Sky makes it. It's oh, like Sky. the DX, the DXG1 or something like that. And then they also make a CPX2 and 380, which I think is pointless because I doubt the recoil feel is going to be much different than the 9. And they've got a slightly different barrel design than the 380, but it's the same price. It's basically the same capacity, almost the same. It might be just a little bit shorter, but it isn't much more compact overall. It's only like a like an, a little over an inch wide anyway, if you don't count the the safety or the slide release. It's It's like an inch thick. So, yeah. So my saying, go buy a CPX2. I would take it over nothing. I take it over a pointed stick, but uh, that's about as far as I would take it. So, yeah. Something and if you, you have problems, they... truck gun or something like that. yeah, yeah. If you want something, just something. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work. I mean, mine ran eight or nine hundred rounds before I started having problems, and eventually it took a new slide barrel and guide rod and spring to get it to function because my uh, my extractor head was it the extractor? Yeah, my extractor had worn out on mine. And then they add, they have redesigned the, the 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 feed ramps a little bit. They've redesigned the barrel a little bit on the nine millimeters. So I think they're maybe a little more reliable than they were before. But mine would really run into issues with I'd have FTE problems all the time. I think I spent more money on ammo diagnosing problems on that than I did uh, that actually paid for the gun. So because I would run a couple hundred rounds at a time and see if I could get it to run. So it was my carry gun for three years, and so that's why you know. But so yeah, they're out there. They're fine. Um, all right. Uh, Black Hat, what would you say? What's out in your neck of the woods? What can you find for 350 or less? Uh, I couldn't unmute for a second there. Oh, no. Don't worry about uh, it, man. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite we were talking about before would be the Ruger Security 9. They're still right around there, I think. I haven't priced one locally because there's not a whole lot of guns to be bought locally around me right now. But, uh, uh, the Security 9 and the Security 9 Compact, I don't know if they're actually charging any more for the Compact. They were the same price. They used to be sub 300, but I think they're around 350. Yeah, I think we said they were, you could 329, I think is what you can get a Security 9. Yeah. Which that would be, you know, between that or a G3, I mean, G3s are 299. I would either go with the Security 9. The, the, the Security 9 is more of a Glock 19 size, and your G3 is more of a Glock 17 compatible, like not compatible, but comparable size yeah. frame with the capacity and stuff. Um, and I believe the G3s and the G3Cs come with three magazines, so that's that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you only get two with yeah. the Security Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is perfectly fine because those are great guns too. I mean, the feel in the hand is wonderful on those. Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely. Um, nice. I'm trying to think some other ones that we maybe somebody else won't mention. Uh, I was gonna say, you know what? I don't know if you can still get them, but if you look it up. Usually, at some point, there'll be some more Smith & Wesson Model 10s mm. that come in and out. They're always police trades, like surplus ones. A lot of times, you'll find them. The last one I bought was sub $300, but usually, they're 350 or less when they come in. And it's, Man, a, service yeah. size, it's a service yeah. 38 revolver, you know? Yeah. So, if you're looking for a wheel gun, that would be it. Because the 856s, like you guys mentioned with Gary, were... Like sub three fifty, they were right around three hundred to three fifty. Unless you got the like some of the fancy colored frames went up to like three seventy or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't see them coming back in stock or for that cheap of a price when they do come back in stock because they kind of that was one of the first snubbies that sold out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's 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 kind of it's kind of a it's kind of a rough market if you just gotta you gotta look around and see what's out there. So. I mean, it's hard to say. If you go back to, oh, let me shut this. If you go back to like pre panic prices, you could get a Rock Island Armory, like a basic 1911 for 349 a lot of places. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? They're or one of the Zenith ones. Yeah. Where you can oh, get yeah. an, uh, an ATI for that price. Yeah. 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 Now we're looking at what, about $100 more, 450 for one? Yeah, they're like yeah. 450, stuff okay, like that 40. now. So. Okay. Yeah. 
And, uh, okay, let's see. Rich White, your neck of the woods. What's good for 350, man? What can you find? Basically the same stuff everybody else mentioned. And if you check your pawn shops, you can find uh, used guns for in that price range. You can get yourself, um, if you're looking for a wheel gun, you can get a Smith & Wesson 642, some places for under 350 used. So, I mean, they're going, they're going what, 450 I think, new for those right now. Okay, but okay. If you look, you look at the used market, yeah, you can find them for 350 or less. Check your, check your, they like said, check your pawn shops. You never know what you're going to find. But some of those pawn shops, and Nestle are also specialized as a gun store as well, like the one here does. A lot of the times they're not going to know what the value of that gun is. Or they might have it priced under what it should actually be selling for. So mm-hmm. check your local pawn shops and see what they got in stock too. Don't, you don't necessarily have to buy new. You can buy a used gun in very good condition for not a lot of money. Definitely, man. Definitely. Um, what's what's sad is a lot of the good police trade-ins that were available six months ago. I was checking them like nightly. I was going on the websites that had the police trade-ins for sale. You were able to find They're a lot not. of SIGs. If you didn't mind giving a DAC trigger SIG, you could get one for like three fifty, four hundred tops. Um, a lot of your forty Smith Glocks were going for two ninety nine, uh, two seventy nine for forty five ACP. Uh, M and P's. Um, I mean, these were just man. I'll tell you, it was amazing. I wish I would have jumped on some of those because they had some really good deals. And there's a few websites that have great uh, police trading gun sections, but a lot of that stuff is just done anymore. Um, Nice strike. What about you? What can you find in your neck of the woods for three fifty or less? Anything different than what we mentioned? Just in terms of handguns, because we can talk SKS and from, whatever. From my local shop, nothing. Oh. If you want to know what's in my area, go to PalmettoStateArmory.com because that's it. that's it. Because most of the stores are like. They're they're out of guns. Yeah, and so let's let's talk about PSA. I mean, for a minute. Yeah, well, go ahead. Well, they're, they're not out of guns, but all they all the all the, all the store all the local places here, it's all all they're carrying these right now is really crappy pump action shotguns and you know bolt action rifles, and I have no interest in any of those. Yeah. You know it's getting bad when you go to Bud's gun sh- Bud's gun shop and it's just it'll say like in store only <laughs> like on most of the listings there's nothing for sale to buy online anymore like it's very very limited. Um, so so with PSA another option and this is not going to get you in at 350 but it is an option you can get your um, complete pistol lowers. I think for under two hundred dollars from PSA depends if you want a fin or a stability brace on the back or not. Um, I was checking I did order a new complete carbine lower today uh with the magpul furniture on i got it for 229 and then 17 for shipping and i went back and kind of checked i think i was paying uh, going i went back into my my order manifest from psa over the last couple years and i think the lowest i ever got a pistol lower for was like 129 and then from there you could get yourself an upper but uppers are yeah 300 325 i went to um optics planet i went to optics planet and started scanning the uppers yeah go ahead uh, they, they, uh, I, I don't know if they, they're still in stock, but uh, I got an email yesterday from uh, PSA saying mm-hmm. that they had mid-length uh, nitride uppers for three twenty-nine. And those were <laughs> the blemish ones were two hundred dollars two years ago. Um, yeah, those were the blemish ones. Not bad. Yes, I need I need an upper. But right it now. does come it's with the bolt trigger group and charging handle, so three twenty-nine oh, oh. is about is, is about worth okay. it. Well, those were two hundred complete back in the day, but three twenty-nine is uh, not bad. No, ba- ba- back in the day they were two ninety-nine. No, I got mine for one ninety nine. It might have been a Memorial Day sale because I have the actual. It purchase. might have been. I got it. It was just. Was, I remember I did without the bolt carrier group, they were one ninety nine. With the bolt carrier group, they were two ninety nine. Okay, I remember mine, that. Mine was complete for one ninety nine, but that was just like a Memorial Day. I bought it in May because I ended up gifting it um, uh, a little while later on. To, when was to that? Was that two thousand fifteen or sixteen? No, this is twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen. I can go back and check. I'll check my receipts after we get done, and I'll show you because it was with the bulk here. But it's one of those things where you see it for like a weekend deal where they do like a three day deal where they have a countdown timer on it and stuff. It was the right, mid right. blemished, and it might not have even been. I don't even know if it might not have been nitrided. They have the two different options for the finish. Right. It was the not so fancy finish, but still. Um, but right now I was kind of looking around and I'm not sure what I want to go with. Cause I know Bear Creek Arsenal and upper is about 308, um, PSA, they don't have a lot in stock. Like if you're looking PSA, oh. you're going to spend 450 or more for an upper right now, unless you uh, want a pistol upper. I, I know, I know, I, I know. And I know cringe when I say this, but Delton has uppers for sale. I, are they bad? Cause I was looking at them this morning and I, I was, people I was, said they're, they're bottom of the barrel, but okay. it, you know, from what I've seen, they're no worse than Anderson. 
Yeah, and when you, I, I went to Optics Planet and I started scanning the prices. I started at the top and went to the bottom. When I hit about the three hundred twenty-five dollar range, you could still get complete uppers from from Delton. Is it Delton or Delton? How do we pronounce I, it? I, I, I don't Delton. understand. I, I, I don't um, know. What, how do you? Pronounce are they it? are they still in business? They're still making. Yeah. Okay, they are. Okay, They've so you got can a website. A you, can buy, yeah. you can order yeah, yeah. directly from the website from them. Yeah, they're they're three fifty, but they're a little. Oh, well, maybe they're. I don't know if they're cheaper or not. If you go, but I was when I was looking through Optics Planet, yeah. I think it was three twenty nine. Would get me the eleven and a half inch upper with a pinned five and a half inch flash suppressor on it. So I was kind of thinking about going that route just for something totally different, or maybe go with that Wolf T ninety one upper, that piston. Uh, is that the is it the the Korean or the Hong Kong service upper? No, it's Taiwanese. Taiwanese, Taiwanese. Yeah, those are those are four ninety nine. I thought that'd be kind of fun for just something different. I mean, that's gonna make for an expensive build. But I only paid, like I said, two twenty nine for the lower. So, but pistol wise, I did check, and PSA is charging a hundred dollars more for the complete ten and a half inch upper than they were two years ago. So yeah. they're they're up a hundred because I paid two forty nine, two fifty nine with the bolt carrier group and a charging handle, and now they're now they're three sixty nine. So to get that in your lower, you're looking at probably five hundred. Well, so yeah, well, Travis, the Delton uppers. They do come with a bolt carrier group and charging handle. So. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. And I was so, looking at those. I might just get that eleven and a half inch just because it looks pretty sweet. I'm, it's got the the pin flash suppressor on the front of it. I'm eyeing the chrome line mid length. Mm -hmm. And the you chrome lines chrome are those line. like fifty bucks more for the chrome line? Is that what they run? No, it's three eighty five. Okay, okay. So I mean, that's you know three to four hundred is what you're going to pay for just an, an entry level yeah. complete up or any more. Um, we have, mm -hmm. okay, so Patriot in the Dark said he forwarded an email for semi-auto shotguns for under 300. Amaro Lapon has PX4 Storm Berettas for 370 used. Now, Black Hat just posted an email here. Um, Beretta APX is for 349 are back in stock at grabagun.com. Mossberg MC1s are 349. That Beretta APX for 349, I got a buddy that has a Centurion model, and I used it. I made a cleaning video on it. I was very, very impressed with the quality. I mean, it, it is, it's, the finish was fantastic. The build quality was not, was very robust. The frame felt sturdy. He shot the heck out of it. He has no problems with it at all. He's, he's run, he's I'm, just new I'm to the excited. handgun world, but he's probably put close to a thousand rounds through it already in the last six months. Um, I was going to say for 349, that's kind of a hard deal to beat. That was yeah. pretty panic prices too. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's over at grabagun.com. Bread APX is, I would just, I would get one of those because you can get magazines or, usually readily available at most of your gun stores they are like 30 or 40 bucks, but you get two and it's, it's a nice gun. It's a great, I mean, I'm going to say that's, that's up there with the same quality as your, like your M and P's and your locks and so on in terms of the fit and the finish and stuff. Um, and remember that was the military trial um, model, right? The APXs were designed for the, the military trials before the military went with the six. Yeah. You so, can't, over on CDNN, you can't even get a creed for three fifty now. So, I mean, and they they had them for two ninety nine or less for how are long? they okay are they three fifty or three ninety nine? Yeah, they're uh, if I remember, last time I looked for remember right they were three ninety they were wanting three ninety nine three ninety nine but yeah they were what two forty nine at one point and then yeah. they were selling either the Creed or the SD nine VE for two seventy nine. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So real quick, the SD nine. Did you did yeah. you see what happened this week? Man, a lot of things happened this week. What happened this week, Nice Rick? PSA released the AK seventy four variant they built. But it was out within like, you know, four minutes. seconds. Yeah. So here's yeah. here's the question I have. So now I just saw a news story last night, and I don't know if this is true, but supposedly the Russian military wants to move on to the AK-19, which is a 5.56 five, chambered AK variant. I'm like, they're, so they're here, trying to take deal. away all our ammo. That's if what they're this doing. this is true, if the Russian military is going to adopt the AK-19, I would highly recommend you guys that want to get an AK-74 – Get 545 ammo now because there is imported Russian 545 ammo. I'm curious if the Russian military would ever switch to a 556 AK, would um would we have trouble getting 545 in the US? Do you think the production would go down because the domestic consumption isn't there anymore or not? No, because there, there's so many former satellite countries that still use the 74 and okay. even 47. You know, you're going to get – it might not be from Russia, but you're going to get tons of surplus ammo from all these other countries because they're not going to switch over just because Russia does. So, yeah. So, I mean, 545 ammo is, is relatively I, – I, what is it, 250 for a case of 1,000? Is it more? I haven't looked for a long time, and I'm not – there's not – Nothing wrong with the AK-74, but I'm just not really in the market for one right now. But um, I think the prices I, on it are pretty fair. I just, I just want one. I just want one, 
and I'll probably get the PSA one because you know it's it's the most it's the easiest for me to get. But the the the, the, point, the thing is, I just want one AK, one AK seventy four, and you know I've got like six ARs, so I need to sell an AR. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um. So with those AK seventy fours, did you sign up for the email notification to find out when they actually go in stock or not? Uh, I did, but. Whether that whether that actually works or not, we'll see. It does. That's how I got my AKV. But you got to you got to hit the computer in about three minutes if you want to buy it. As soon as you get that email show up and tell you that it's in stock, um, like yeah, AKVs are hilarious. They're you going also have to have the over. funds in your bank account in order to get it too. Of course, of course, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what were they selling the AK seventy fours for anyway? I don't know. I wasn't able to see them in stock. Ah, was seven ninety nine? Anybody out there in YouTube land watching? Can you guys give me an idea what PSA's I, MSRP on the AK seventy four is? Scott P seventy nine knows if he's out there. Anybody out there know what they're going for? So, um, Snake Doctor seventy eight PSA dagger was three hundred dollars. No idea when or if they will launch. I wonder if PSA isn't holding off to like maybe like a month before the election, and then they're just going to clear them out. Are. They're just going to be like three hundred dollars, and everybody's going to go nuts and just buy them, and then. You know, I mean, I really think that's what they're going to do. They would sell out anyway if they put them in right now, but maybe they want to have a certain stock number in stock before they put them up for sale. You know, I think if we start or, seeing them, if we start seeing production ones showing up on the big gun channels on YouTube, I think that means they're going to be coming soon. Or um, Travis, they may be, they may be saving them for Black Friday. Hmm. And here's here's what's sad about Black Friday pricing on guns this year: the Black Friday, the Black Friday pricing on guns you're going to get this year, it's going to be what we were paying four months ago, five months ago. You're like, oh my yeah. god, what a great deal! And no, that's what it was for no, years was, up until that's the what pandemic. It was last you know? year. <laughs> I got a shield for two ninety nine. Really? Yeah, it's fifty dollars off. You know, and a lot of these places are just kind of jockeying around the prices and stuff. And what really makes me mad, the biggest disappointment right now, and, and Black Hat and I were talking about this, is the um. The uh, the Tokarevs, the Chinese Tokarevs that they're selling over on Classic, they're three forty nine. weren't Tokarevs yeah. like a two hundred nineteen dollar gun like two weeks ago? Uh, I'm sorry, but even even a Chinese, Hi, one, I can understand like that. pushing up prices on guns that were underpriced, like new guns that were underpriced, but like taking the surplus gun and pfft, you know, I mean, but maybe maybe supplies are running low and naturally prices do go up on those guns. You know, just like now you're seeing the Star BMs going for two forty nine or you know two seventy nine yeah. new or not new but used you know out there on the market. Um, but there's your under three fifty gun a star BM. So two gun cat, two gun kitty, the catnip outlaw says, I bet the dagger releases for four hundred now. Why sell for three hundred dollars in this environment? Because two gun kitty, if you if you get those customers in at three hundred, they're gonna buy it and they're like, oh man, I wish I would have got the suppressor ready model for four hundred. They're gonna turn around and buy that. Because yeah, I wish the I got a slide cut model for you know fifty bucks more. I'm telling you, if you ask anybody that has a gun store, I I would wager that the three hundred fifty dollar and less handgun market is is where they push a lot of their inventory, just because of the economic conditions of people. There's a lot of people that want a first gun, but they that four hundred dollar price point five hundred it just seems to be out of their reach. Although anybody can save up and buy one. Um, and I just checked yesterday's email from CDNN. As of yesterday, they're wanting. Three ninety nine ninety nine for the Creed. Oof. So they push that up one fifty, which is what retail MSRP. Yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong yeah. with it, guys. I mean, it's not the prettiest handgun in the world, but if you need something, man, just. Okay, so uh, Black Hat also posted uh, G three two tone. That's going to be the stainless slide with the black frame, uh, four inch barrel, seventeen rounds, two sixty nine over on Grab a Gun. Now I don't know what shipping is going to cost locally. I can get G threes for two ninety nine, but if you don't have a G three around. Uh, that would be the one that I would definitely buy. Although I'm going to say something on the G3s. I've got a lot of people. I probably had about a dozen people in the last two months that have watched my cleaning video that have complained that when they take their G3 apart and try to put it back together, they can't get the barrel to go back in the slide. So if you're going to get a G3 and they will let you do this in the gun store, take it apart and make sure it'll reassemble before you leave the gun store. I don't know. My G3 never had that problem. And I, I mean, I, I got kind of a, one that was you know five six months into production before I bought mine. Um, Gary, do you have a do you have a G three? I can't remember. Do you have a G three or G three C? No, I don't. I haven't bit the bullet on that yet. I uh, really before you take delivery, take it apart, and because a lot of people are saying they cannot, they they don't understand how the barrel even went in the slide at the factory. They cannot. The tolerances on it are like that. Like mallet it back in, and you should not have to do that to get it to go in. 
No. No. Wow. No. So be careful because I'm saying, and it's not, these are not just one person complaining. I have lots, I say lots, at least a dozen complaints about the barrel not going back in. They're like, what do I do? What do I do? I'm like, I don't want to say sand it or file it. God, the last thing you want to do is file down your barrel. I mean, you shouldn't have to do, I'd say send it back. And then people are saying, well, Taurus is telling me 12 week turnaround on repairs. So, Man, if you're going to get a G3, you really want to make sure it will go apart and go back together. I had an FN9C, the compact FN9, that had a very super tight fit. You had to get it just right to get the barrel to go back into the slide. And I mean, I wasn't messing around. I literally, I was just trying to reassemble it. It would not go. So on the G3, be careful because we're making recommendations for these guns. I don't want you to buy something that, you know, one person said, well, I, one person got it back together and they said, I think I'm just going to fire a lot clean it without taking out the barrel and see if that kind of breaks in a little bit more. And so even if it's just like a thousandth of an inch off, it can make that barrel, you know, not fit properly. So you got to watch out for that. Um, so yeah, Mr. Trek fan, Dan says selling my Smith and Wesson shield first run and getting the G three. Um, yeah, I definitely would, uh, look into that. Travis, I have one more on there too. They have the Mossberg MC one compact for three forty nine, also, which, Considering a G43 is pretty much impossible to find right now, that's almost identical in size. Wow, well, I think I think G Webs has been watching E Honda's Gay Frog Chat a little too a little too often because look what he just said. I feel that this whole defund the police is a giant scam by a faction of nine millimeter addicts to get cheap police trade ins when they fire when they fire all those cops. Hashtag nine millimeter theory. Well, I mean, you know, we got those 40s out of their hands. Why not just push the nines out now into the used market, right? That's a possibility. I maybe you guys can help me on this one. There's a question from the from the chat over here. Squib loader 1966. Oh, my Chromebook's just okay. Uh, opinion 96. on the Ruger, Squib loader 1996. Opinion on the Ruger SP 101 22 LR. Good buy at 450. The Ruger SP 101. Do you guys have any experience with the Ruger SP 101? Anybody know? Yes, I, I shot carry him in one. 31. Yes, I carry one. In 22? 327 Federal. Okay, yeah, because I'm seeing 357 mags. Yeah, they're they're 550 for a three inch barrel, 357 mag. 22, I'm seeing I'm seeing 649 as the entry level price for an SP 101. So yeah, that that is a RK Guns has them for 649 squib loader. Whether it's new or used, that is a very very good price. Very good price. Uh, G-Web says, am I too correct? Um, G-Webs, that is a very interesting theory. I, I, That is a possibility, man. It is a possibility that maybe that's what the whole movement's about, is trying to get more 9mm and guns back out into the open market for us. Only to, time to, will tell. To replenish all of those police trade-ins that we can no longer get. Now that the 40s are gone, I never thought I'd say that. Now that the 40s are all gone, um, the 9 millimeters are going to start going out there, so... Uh, all right. Well, 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 Travis, if you still want a two two nine, I I have one. Yeah, yeah but it's a DAC. It's a DAC. I want a single action, double action. Uh, I want a two twenty nine railed in three fifty seven sig. But uh, that's what it is. <laughs> I was going through my emails again, and a classic has the Tesoth Zigana PX nine nine millimeter four and a half inch pistol for two ninety nine ninety nine. It looks like it would be a copy of the. Springfield um, XD series. Yeah. How much are they asking for it? Two ninety nine ninety nine. It comes with a holster. Okay. Yeah. The T sauce line. They've got a couple different ones. I would not recommend you buy the one that comes with their factory red dot on the top. I've watched a few reviews on, it, and the red dot is just not holding up to any kind of a round count. So I'd get it without the T sauce. Again, you're going to be. And somebody had made a comment over on the YouTube side. They said, "Well, unfortunately, a lot of these lower price handguns are, are Turkish manufacture." You know, I don't know what to tell you guys. I mean, that's, you know, I don't want to argue the ethics of whether or not you should buy Turkish guns. I mean, we buy stuff from China. We buy stuff oh. from Russia. We buy stuff from, these aren't exactly friendly countries that don't like us, but they're taking our money. So I, I did, I did buy yeah. that, that break open shotgun, you know, single shot for 99 bucks from Walmart. That mm -hmm. was made in Turkey. Yeah. And here's the thing. A lot of people don't realize that a ton of shotguns come from Turkey. A lot of your major yeah. manufacturers, mm -hmm. Marlin, oh, Mossberg, Winchester, well, they I'll, source I'll, their guns at factories based out of Turkey because they've been making shotguns for like 150 years. I mean, I'm sorry. But all your over under shotguns sold, yeah. in the, sold in this country are made in Turkey. 
No, nah, the silver so, condors one, were made in Brazil by Brass Tech. If you want to go one or two Turkish over under, but one yeah, or two yeah. brands are made here in the United States, and 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 one of them is made in South America. But the rest in, on the market right now are made in Turkey. And there might be some high end custom over unders that are American made, like your Brownings. Your Brownings are made in Japan, if I'm not mistaken. The Browning over the Satori's, um, Berettas are made in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I got a TriStar Setter, 12 gauge over under. TriStar is an American based company, but they do import their uh, they're over unders from from Turkey, just like all the other TriStar yeah. farms that are out there. Um, is now, is Ruger that, still made in the U.S.? Who? Ruger over and unders still uh, made in the U.S. Is it there? What do they call their series? The red Ruger, the red label. Red label. Red, red label. label. I don't know. I don't know if they're still made in the U.S. or not. Um, that's a tough one. So I don't. I'm not sure. And we'll have to look up and see where they produce them because a lot of people, a lot of places have moved over. I would just say that if you're going to get uh, an over under shotgun that you know if you don't go with a satori or a beret and i'm sure i'm missing a lot of other brands but i don't know if mossberg does mossberg might have an over under just you know if no, you don't want to go turkish made more. you don't have a lot of options unless you want to drop say you know a 900 dollars on a really nice over under that's not turkish made i don't know if you want to buy it just for the whole purpose of not having a turkish made one but me i do want to get a nicer over under i just wanted to see if i'd really enjoy trap shooting enough to spend the money and invest in it and get myself an expensive over under so there you go. I picked up one of those Smith & Wesson M&P 40s, yeah. and uh, so far, I like it. I mean, I haven't shot that that much. I had it in that video along with that GP100, mm-hmm. and uh, it shot quite well for 25 yards, you know, without really working with it. Like I said, uh, not having too much experience behind the, uh, the trigger there yet, uh, I had a... I think it was about a three-inch group at 25 yards with my hand loads. Geez, I picked that up at 239. Yeah, yeah. So you know, <laughs> and and it's not it's not in bad shape. I got to uh, replace the sights. I'd like to get a set of fire sights for it. Mm-hmm. They come with the tritium tritium sights on it, but the uh, tritium's well worn out and it's not working like it should. So mm-hmm. I'm going to replace those sights. I'm going to get two sets of those fire sights. As a matter of fact, for my pair of Ordnance P14 and for that uh, M&P 40. Sweet, man. Yeah. So, uh, I like it. Black Hat is sharing something for us. The SDS Import Zagana PX9. So, this looks like an FN 9C slide. It really does look like an old FN slide with like a Springfield inspired uh, frame without the grip safety on the back. Yeah, and there's no grips on markings. No grips on markings. The only problem I have with that gun, I mean, it's Turkish made. Okay, ah. so you get that right now. If you want to get it, go ahead. That's fine. Um, magazines might be a little hard to source for that. Those might be proprietary. I don't know if they're compatible with anything else. There's nothing wrong with that. If you need something, I mean, I've watched, is it T Sauce? Who else does a lot of T Sauce? There's like SAR and T Sauce reviews on a lot of our kind of our gun channels uh, family, you know, that uh, of gun channels on YouTube that have tested those and, and they're fine for what they are. Um, Zagana also does, I think, like a 1911 clone. Um, so I mean, there's 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 nothing wrong with that if you want one. But I mean, for two, I personally, I would rather get the G3. But you aren't necessarily gonna. I mean, there's magazines are going to be more readily available for the G3. But I don't know, Black Hat. Anything you would say about that one at all? Uh, is he the one sharing? Because I know I was. I think so. Or who's sharing? Rich, you're sharing that one. Yeah. Oh, I thought maybe that was Black Hat because wasn't he talking about it before? No, I was one. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay. So, what do you think about this one, Rich? Would you ever consider going this route if you couldn't find anything else? If you can't find anything else, and it, you know, it's a complete um, setup. I mean, you're ready to go out of the box. Mm-hmm. It comes with the holster. It comes with a mag loader. You get two mags with it. Can we get a Canic? Uh, don't they make the Canic TP9 one that comes with a single mag for two ninety nine? Can we get those? The TP9 SF one. They make a very stripped down basic one where I don't think you get the holster with it and all the accessories. I don't know. I haven't seen a Canic in my area for under three fifty. Okay, because I, yeah, I know the TP9 SFs were three forty nine at one point. Um, so plain reality says I have both the Taurus TX twenty two and the G two C both surprisingly good for the money. Yeah, uh, TX twenty twos I've seen them locally for three forty nine. Uh, my aunt actually has one and she shoots hers all the time. I know. A couple of you guys here on the panel have the have the TX twenty twos there. They're great for what they are. Um, hey, type in Zagana. Let's see what other Zaganas they have over on Classic because they've got they've got a bunch of different models. Yeah, I was looking to see if it said what magazines are compatible with it, but 
but oh okay okay that's yeah. and the problem is man you might not be able to get mags for it you may be able to score one somewhere but and you might not wear the magazines out i mean who knows there's you could always possibly replace the springs on it okay, well, so is the glock is the glock compatible no <laughs> okay there you go it says it takes a it, oh somebody here saying you can get use the mechar uh, 226 magazines with it i wonder if it sticks out of the bottom though it might stick out you might have an inch of who cares you know you at least got magazines right I've been thinking about one of those TX-22s now. So now, so G-Webs has a comment. He's a little confused by that by that Zagana that we're showing off. He says, I feel like I would probably pick that gun up by the slide three out of four times without a grip zone engraved in the correct part of it. Yeah. That's a possibility, <laughs> man. I mean, there's I mean a you might you might like I, grab uh, it backwards. God forbid. I mean, look at that. You might mix up the uh, the you know the the stippling or something and, and and think you're holding it properly and do not operate in the dark. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, there's a reason why those Croatian Springfield say grip zone right there on the grip. I mean, you gotta know where you gotta pick it up from. And it's funny to put that in English, but <laughs> hey, we got Defense Dad joining in. Defense Dad, you want to get in on this conversation? Your favorite sub three hundred fifty dollar guns. What do you think, brother? Uh, I tell you what. If Probably have to be the Canic, uh, if you can find them still. TP9, any of the TP9 series. I know they've got the one that has the decocker on the top of it. I'd go for an SF, just because that's just the semi-automatic, no safety. You know, if I was going to get one, I, I've always thought the SFs are, are kind of cool looking. I know they, I mean, they do, they do hold up, and I'm not trying to boast, again, Turkish-made guns, but there's a lot of guys that have them that put a lot of rounds through them they don't have any issues with them, so, you know. Well, the reason I'd go for it is as close as I can get to my PPQ that I love, okay. as far as feel-wise and trigger-wise. Um, that or, you know, I'm really liking my G2C, although it does, I am finding it shoots low, like a lot of people are saying. And that's even after changing the sights on it? I haven't changed it yet. I haven't had a chance yet. i got to find a taller rear sight on it. Okay. okay. So um, I'm looking over here at the TP9 SF. I'm trying to see if anybody has them for sale. Yeah, at one point they were 319 two months ago over there on Gun Prime. Uh, 399 six months ago. 299 for the TP9 SF1 series over at Rainier Arms. Uh, again, a lot of these things are just classic. Was showing 319. Oh, that was 17 months ago. That's a problem with Gun Dot Deals. When you look stuff up, you really got to check the dates on it because you have no idea when stuff's going to show up. So. Yeah, I have a hard time beating the value of that G3C that I just picked up, though. When you get something with 12-round capacity, three mags, good trigger, and it's American-made, mm -hmm. how, how, how do you go wrong? I had over 3,000 rounds through my G2C that I got rid of for that, so I'm hoping I have the same reliability with it. So I've got an email that a, that a, uh, a viewer sent me here. Uh, let's see, Patriot in the Dark sent this one to me. We've got... M&P Night Shield M2.0 for $399. And they got a Citadel Pax 12 pump for $199 right now. They've got some Springfields. We're going to pass on that. Uh, Citadel semi automatic 12 gauge for $279. But I do want to stick more with uh, with handguns. So, but yeah, and, and you know, I, like I said, G3 is what I would probably go for. Um, let's see. I just got that. No, I'm looking to see if anybody had a comment on there. So I can find some canics in my safe. Fluffy 10 millimeter Jeep guy says uh, Smith and West and SD VE series. If you can find them, if you get an SD nine VE, um, I'm going to recommend, although the factory doesn't like this, I would recommend that you get yourself a stainless steel guide rod and spring from uh, Galloway or NDZ performance off of eBay, because they have a very flimsy guide rod spring combo that comes with the SD nine VE. They don't always go back into battery. Um, I've had two, and they both had issues with that until I changed out the guide rod in the spring. So I replaced those, and they say, well, you're going to break out the little pedals that the, the guide rod rides against when it cycles. I've yet to break mine out. I've probably got about seven or 800 rounds on that pistol with that guide rod installed and not had any problems with it. So if you get an SD9VE, spend the extra 20 or 30 bucks. Just get the 19-pound factory weight spring guide rod. And I really don't think you're going to have any problems, but I got to make a disclaimer. I mean, the factory doesn't want you to do it because it could, it could potentially crack the frame. So that's a, that's a risk you're going to take, although I've yet to actually have problems with it. So it does definitely cycle with way more authority if you swap out the, uh, the guide rod. I will say that. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and here, let's get you guys back to Brady Bunch view here. Let's see what's actually out there. What can we get? So I went over to Gunbroker. We're doing buy it now, max price 350 and when we get started, you know, obviously we have the Heritage Rough Rider, 
six inch barrel 119 i would recommend you get one for a little bit more with the uh 22 magazine cylinder although those seem to be getting a little bit harder to find i'm assuming they're still in production but if you need something i mean guys what do you think heritage rough rider as any kind of a viable option for self-defense defense dad you did a video on 22lr for self-defense what what's kind of your take on this um i mean personally i'd rather have more than those are what six shots or eight shots per hit uh six i believe yeah and personally especially if it's going to be 22 i i think 22 is viable i'd rather have more than six shots but you know it's it, six shots at 22 is better than a whole empty nine millimeter that you can only hit somebody with yeah, yeah and they mean, do make the uh uh oh you shoot uh <laughs> The twenty two magnum ammo for the twenty two magnum there. I can't remember the whole the whole oh, bit about it. Hornady or who makes it? Who actually makes it? Yeah, that's Hornady. Hornady makes it. Okay. Yes. Oh. They make it they make like a critical defense twenty two LR, twenty two mag. Critical, nah, twenty two mag, not twenty two long rifle. Twenty two mag. Yeah, you if, if, you, if you've got a if mm -hmm. you've got a defense situation in your house, you don't need sights. And that twenty two will definitely get the job done. At close range, you know, there's been more people shot with a 22 than there has anything else, I believe, yeah. and the performance of it is is pretty impressive, really. Yeah, with the here's the thing with the Rough Riders, both me and a uh, budget guns and gear are using the same thing with ours, because we both have the ones that convert from 22 long rifle to 22 mag, and ours yes. are more accurate with the 22 magnum than they are with the 22 long rifle. Yeah, uh, swappable cylinders. Yeah. So that's I'm what I right like. Now. We got, wow, yeah, they got an FTX bullet, critical defense, 22 WMR, 45 grain. Yep. That, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they show some ballistics testing and stuff like that. I mean, I would say at the minimum, man, at the minimum, if you're going to do that kind of setup for any kind of home defense, if that's what you got, we're not going to criticize you. We're not going to berate you if that's all you can get or if that's all you have. Um you know, if you could find yourself, go to the gun store, if you could get yourself a high point in 45 or 40 or 9, you know, we all joke about them. But, I mean, I've, I've owned several and never had an issue. You've got a lifetime warranty on them. Um, they will they will run. I mean, I'm not – they you could – mags can be a little bit finicky. But you could probably pick yourself up a used high point at this point for 150. The high points are going for close to 170 to 200 on the used market right now. I never thought I would say that. Um, and I, I think they had to shut their lines down for a while. So, for a while there, there were no new – production high points coming out of the factory, but I believe they're up in production now. I got an email from them recently where they were talking about the E-Cannon G2, the Gen 2 E-Cannon, kind of giving an update on that and stuff. And they just simply say it'll get done when it gets done. Um, that'll be an interesting one. I wonder if they're going to release the the the, the, the E-Cannon 2 about the same time as the Dagger. That would be something I think a lot of guys would just buy both of them. Because though the E-Cannons were going to have uh, suppressor-ready barrels with, with suppressor-ready sights for what were they going to be like, like 249 or something like that so it'll be interesting to see what happens when when those actually come out well and travis what i was gonna say is you know if you're asking me 22 for home defense like right now if it's a yeah. two gun owner and they they can't find anything else yeah if it's me and i've already got stock at nine i'm probably not going to do it my first choice for some self-defense but if you don't have a gun and you feel like you need to get one just right now because you want something to protect yourself, look on your look on your local gun shelf and see what you can actually buy before you buy a gun. Yeah, I got an I got a family member her her first pistol that she bought. She's going to upgrade to a nine eventually. It's a TX twenty two and she keeps it loaded with uh, mini mags. CC, she's got three magazines full of CCI mini mags. And we just said, you know, if you got to use it, you know, that's that's so be it. You know, that's if that's what you got, that's perfectly, you know. And eventually we do want to move her up to, you know, maybe like an EZ-9 or something like that. Um, okay, so let's just kind of scan and see what else is out there. So we can get you a Rough Rider at 119. They've got, obviously got a lot of different grips and barrel links and stuff like that. You can still get that. Uh, cricket rifles are probably going to pass. Now you get a Rossi Bolt Action RB-22 for 129. You can get that also in semi-automatic for 129, but those are rifles. We're trying to stick with pistols. We did have a question. Can you get yourself into an AR pistol for 350? Ooh. 169, Ooh, I think is. We'd have to look in. What's that? I say that one is tough. <laughs> At one point, we Not could get you in one for 300. You could get yourself into an AR pistol. I was talking about that like six months ago, 
But uh, now you're probably looking at more like four hundred dollars if you want to get it. I I think a a pistol lower without a fin on it is what like one sixty nine or something like that from PSA. Um, I think I paid like two sixty nine for an SBA three Magpul. No, two forty nine, two forty nine for the SBA three lower with the EPT trigger and the Magpul furniture and stuff. But which PSA screwed up. They made it right, but they did screw up my order. Um, and it took six months to get it straightened out. But um, so yeah, we've got those Heritage Rough Riders floating around there. You guys out there in the chat on the YouTube side, throw some some three hundred fifty dollar options out there. We see a lot of shields. We see a lot of G threes that are popping up. Okay, so a high point, brand new, forty five auto, one forty nine. That's that's not bad. I had a forty five auto. I ended up giving it to my dad. Um, he has it. He shoots it once in a while. Yeah. Those are fine if you want something inexpensive that's gonna, you know, it's gonna it's gonna work for you. Now, granted, concealed carry is gonna be a little bit of an issue. It's a heavy gun. You can get holsters for it with a proper belt. You could conceal carry that. It's gonna be a bit of a brick, but you can go that route. Now we've got the Cobra Big Bore nine millimeter over under Derringer styles for one fifty. When I was over on a uh, classic, they have the uh, SAR USA B six the full size double action single action for three twenty. It's three nineteen ninety nine. Okay. And then the only other thing they have in that price range was the uh, Breda nineteen fifty ones, which is basically like the precursor to the M. So, uh, so let's M92. talk about that. Could could we recommend something like that? I mean, if your person, your average person, can do a little bit of gunsmithing, could they replace some of the possible springs that could wear out on that? Get yourself a new recoil spring. Magazines might be a little bit hard to source. Those are the pre ninety two series Berettas that you're talking about. Yeah, they were like the precursor to it. 279, 299, where the Italian police issue 92s, like what Nice Strike has, those were what, 299 at one point, now they're 349. So you can't get your, I would go for one of those surplus guns if they're still available, because there's plenty of videos online to teach you how to maintain and clean and swap out some of the springs that might, you know, that might wear out. Yeah. You can can still probably get, uh, you know, the the 92 S's if you wanted one for about 339. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, you know, if you don't mind the heel release on them, sure. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, and I'm not ripping it, on them at all. It's a Beretta. Yeah. Yes, it's got the heel release, guys. So it's got European style. But listen, it's a Beretta 92 for under six hundred dollars. Come on. Mm-hmm. And when I was looking over classics, it looks like they're um, out of them. The yeah. 92 S's. So we got a bunch of suggestions coming in on the uh, the YouTube side. Tours TH9. I paid two sixty five out the door. Oh yeah, the TH nines. I forgot about those. The TH nine and the TH forties and the compactor full size. That's the replacement for the eight hundred twos, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Or nine hundred twos? Whatever those yeah. are called. PSA uh, still has the ninety two S's for three thirty nine. Okay, okay. So that's an option if you want one. And and what about magazine availability? Are there Metcar aftermarket options for that or not? Well, it, it, as long as you get the ninety the the, the ninety two magazines that have the, the the bottom cut, then yeah, they're pre- you can pretty much get like any ninety two FS. Or any you know M9 magazine that has the bottom cut in at the bottom of the magazine, as well as you know the top cut for the American style. How hard is something like that for your average person to drum out? Is that a project somebody should do or not? Was that possible? You can modify the mags, or is it going to be wonky it, and janky? It, it, it is, but it's going to be a hard fit. So I okay. wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it unless you have a Dremel and you know how to use it really well. Okay. Yeah. I I kind of screwed up my first couple times. See, Fiend Dog says that he got the Bond Arms rough and rowdy for two ninety nine. Uh, Ozzy Osborne, Ozzy Osborne got the uh, M&P three eighty easy for four hundred out the door. Ruger LCP as a possibility says William Trader. Yeah, um, DM Foz wants to know where the bathroom is. DM Foz, we got to work on your Spanish, man. You're trying really hard, but there's a couple things you got to change S to a sta, and you need an accent mark on the O. And then you got to put your question mark upside down in front of the D, but we'll talk about that later, okay? Uh, but <laughs> sorry, man, I had to correct his grammar. Um, all right, so back to the gun purchases here. What do we got going on? Um, and as for you know doing like an AR pistol, we'd have to go back to PSA and see what. Can one of you guys look up and tell me what what PSA starts at for a complete pistol lower without the fin? Like, what's the least expensive pistol lower you can get over PSA right now? I, I was looking at mine. I think I paid 109 or 129 a year ago for just a plain Jane one that I eventually I added a um, shockwave blade to it. Go ahead and give me. Let me know what you guys find over there. So again, um, another high points popping up here is C9 for 169, brand new, which is like 40, 50 bucks more than they were a couple months ago. I'm seeing a lot of Cobra Derringers. I would take a Rough Rider over a Derringer. Now, when you get to the 175 dollar range, you start to run into the Ruger Wranglers. So if you want something 
Now, I'm not going to say it's a step up from a Heritage, but if you want to get into a Ruger, um, you can get those for 175, which is a really good deal in different finishes. Now, you're not going to get the Magnum cylinder with it, um, but you can at least have something. Uh, there, there was mention out there in the chat, but the Altors. What? I, remind me, Altor. I'm totally drawing a blank the, here. The, the, you know, they were in Shot Show earlier this year. They were the single shot, you know, oh, 22 yeah. and 9 millimeter for like, you know, 100 bucks. Yeah, the one that the one that Gunsnob showed off. Yeah, the one that he <laughs> hates, and he's like, you can bear, you can bury that one quite literally. I, and I'm like, I would take a pointy stick. I would take a spear over an altor. I'm sorry. I mean, that, that, that's the one yeah. you keep in your toolbox and only take out if you absolutely need it. Yeah, yeah. yeah get the other one in the toolbox first. There are some. There are some Chinese Type Fifty Three uh, Mosin barreled actions floating around up there for one ninety two. Nice strike. Yeah, but the problem is. Finding finding a stock for them. There's no aftermarket options out there. Oh, there, there are, might be something on on Etsy or whatever. You might find something that there's a guy out there on Etsy that makes um, wood stocks. They're handmade wood stocks made right here in the USA. He's got a small there shop. There are, but if I'm going to get a Type 53, Type 53, yeah. even an action barrel, uh, I need it to come with a bayonet. Okay, now as we go up in the price point, we hit 199. I'm seeing a Zastava M70, uh, 32 ACP. What do you guys think about that as a uh, it's a viable self-defense weapon. I would probably go with the high mm. point over that or yeah, not. 32 yeah. ACP with critical defense. Do they make critical defense with 32 I ACP? I think they do. I think they do. Why don't you guys check it out and see if they have it? I'm pretty sure there's a 32. I think that we're at 25 ACP, one of the two. I know that they make it. I, I'm pretty sure they make that now because we were looking up. We talked about 32 ACP about a year ago. And that as was far one of the that, As yeah. far as that barreled action for the uh, 762 by 54 Russian choked. <laughs> makes a uh, uh, synthetic stock. Oh, that. okay, okay. I just looked at the um, PSA for their complete lowers. The yeah. cheapest for a pistol is one eighty four ninety nine, and cheapest for a rifle was one eighty nine ninety nine. So they're up about sixty dollars from where they were three months ago. So so one so yeah, absolute basic. Yeah. So like I said, I paid two twenty nine for my 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 Magpul carbine lower. I'm just going to go ahead and do another AR build. I figure I might as well go ahead and get something before the election. But I'm not paying a little bit more, but I couldn't. I mean, if I built it, it'd be about the same price by the time you bought the furniture and all that stuff. So, yeah. And, um, uh, for the same price on the pistol lowers, you can either get it with an A2 or the Magpul grip. Personally, I would go with the Magpul grip. I hate the A2 grips. So, gun website says the best part of trashing guns on public platforms is where antis can literally quote you ragging on the gun. I don't know. We really haven't talked a lot of smack about anything so far. I mean, just talking about stuff that works. Uh, Heritage Rough Rider with the 22 mag cylinder, okay, and the standard 22 LR for 249. Okay, that's a good option. Uh, Star BMs. Now, here we go. Star BMs, they were 179, 249. So, if you don't mind tinkering a little bit, replacing a few springs, cleaning it up. The Star BM nine millimeters for two forty nine. I'm sure if you look around, uh, you can find magazines for those two. You might be a little shocked at the price, but I'd go with. The, I mean, the Star BMs are great. Uh, I know there's a couple guys on on the channel that on our channels that have them. Um, you guys on the panel have Star have a Star BM at all? I do not. No? I have a Beretta ninety two S. Yeah. No. Uh, I don't never know if Ammo has one. Yeah, I have one. How's it been so far? Uh, it's been great. You don't want to shoot the heck out of it, obviously. As far as mags go, yeah, I, I searched high and low for those. Finally, the last time I was at Wanamaker, I, I had no. ever, oops, I had uh, snob and obnoxious and uh, Sarge all looking for one, and they scored one in the entire show. Oh wow! And wow. I paid forty five dollars for that thing. Surprised there's no think... aftermarket options like Mecca or Apex or something. I mean, I can get new production macro magazines from Apex for twenty four dollars. So that's you know. But as far as a nice shooting little gun, you aren't you aren't going to beat it. It it's right on. Those are nice. Mm -hmm. We got a one out there. Phoenix Arms has twenty two LR and twenty five maybe. I know they make a Phoenix Arms target pack that has a longer barrel you can get for it. Phoenix Arms are one fifty retail. Somebody was giving away Jimenez J nine. I had one for a while and it was fine. I mean, I couldn't necessarily recommend it as something you would have put a lot of rounds on, but I mean, it shot. It actually shot really well. It's a blowback style, so it, it actually was was fairly accurate. Uh, CPX twos running two fifty to two seventy. I would take a high point over a CPX2 personally, or even maybe a Star BM. More Star BMs are popping up in the $270 range. 
So as we get closer to 350, there's still options out there for you. Um, and again, mags, yeah, that might be an issue. I, it'd be cool if somebody would get a you know new production BM mags going out there because they're just a single stack nine. I can't imagine it'd be that hard to manufacture something like that. You know, um, Plain Reality says you can still get an Anderson lower for two hundred dollars. Yeah, I was seeing stripped Anderson lowers for fifty nine dollars. I think when I was looking around on Gunbroker, there's a lot of strip lowers that are popping up. When you do the search that I'm doing, um, yeah, Italian bread, a model 1951s for 275. So we have that option going on too. And a lot of, a lot of shotguns in this price range also. Um, the Rock Island M200 38 special revolver for 279. There you go. It's an option for you. Um, oh, here's okay. Here's a decent deal. So classic farms is going what 349 for a Tokarev. And uh, I'm seeing a Zostava M57 for 279 with two magazines. That's not a bad deal. You know, if you don't, 762 by 25, you want to make sure you can source it. Otherwise, you're going to have to order. It's a little expensive. Uh, what else do we have here? Is a G2S popping up for 280. Pass. You can get a brand new G3C for 269 locally. So, oh, the FMKs. Okay, FMK 9C1 G2. FMKs are made in the USA. They're actually made in California. And um, they were, they basically wanted to prove that you could have an American made handgun actually made in California. So that's kind of FMK's like claim to fame. Um, I had a 9C1 G2. My wife had a pink one. And uh, we had pictures of the, of the 9C1 G2 over on gun channels for quite a while. And they're fine, 289. They're, they kind of look like a Glock 19. They're actually very comfortable. You get different grip inserts in the back. You actually get a set of different sights for it, so you can tune the sights however you want. It comes with like four different front sights and rear sights that you can use. Let's see. Oh, okay, you don't want any of those non-stock Type 53s, too much rust on them. Okay. So, yeah, FMK 9C1s are good for 289. Um, I would go that route, 14 rounds, and you get two magazines with them. And extra mags are readily available. They've got a good, they've got a good warranty on them also. So I got nothing against FMK. They also make uh, polymer lowers, too, for ARs. FMK does. Seeing some G2Cs for 289. So we start to approach the $300 level. You guys have any more suggestions? Yeah, LCP 380 for 293. I saw a couple EC9s yesterday locally for 299. I love mine. That's a great gun. I've shot mine quite a bit and not had any problems with it. Here's a Diamondback DB9 FS for 299. But I, I don't know. I they're okay, but you don't see a lot of those around anymore. I'm not even sure if those are even in production anymore. They kind of look like a G17. Yeah, Classic has the Taurus M 856 for a 320. Ooh, there you go. Is that a 38 special or 357? Yeah, 38 special. Okay. Okay. So there's an option for you. Cool. A lot of G2Cs floating around out there. So there's there are guns to be found, you know, under $350. You might just have to pay for some shipping and transfer fees, which, you know, could push you closer to $400, but at least there's something out there. Hey, Travis. Yo, what's up? Hey, sorry. I'm uh, sorry. I might have missed it in the earlier part of the show, but... Mm -hmm. If you head over to our favorite big box store website, there's quite a few for 350 or less and a good selection. Of which, I don't know if you want to name their name on TV, but oh, I mention it all the time. You're talking about Shields? Oh, yeah. I just I, I put just, it, I just say because I'm always saying I found this at Shields, and I'm not buying guns from them, but I am buying ammo and accessories and stuff. But okay, well, I just know, was on their website. They got quite a few for 349 or less. If you can find them, uh, Stoger has their their nine millimeter that they make, and they also make a compact version of it now. And those were three forty nine, three sixty nine with the two mags and the grip inserts, or two ninety nine if you just wanted a single mag. And it does feel a lot like an SD nine VE, the Stoger nine millimeter handguns. And Stoger is an American company; those handguns are made in Turkey, but again, it's an American based company. And so I'm not I'm surprised I'm not seeing those Stogers popping up on here, but I think a lot of people snagged them. Uh, Gizzard Gary, should we pass on the tour spectrum or not with your personal experience? Definitely. Definitely. Cause I know for a while, I know, um, Sandhill shooter and I were kind of interested in picking up a spectrum cause they were like 178 at Wanamaker when we were there. So, I mean, they may have worked out the bugs on them. I don't know. I haven't revisited the spectrum, but I was burnt so bad on that. Left a bad taste in my mouth. And, <laughs> So, I mean, buyer beware on those. Look and see what other people say. If everybody says they fixed everything now, then go for it. But really, they've got the the tolerances are so precise on that gun. If it's not absolutely perfect, 
<clears throat> better choices out there. There just are. I, I agree. I agree. So so we got to stop the presses for a second. Plain Reality out there. Uh, Plain Reality says, I'm new to the channel and glad I found y'all, but my name is Travis too. It trips me out a little, but I'll get used to it. Hey, Plain Reality, welcome to the Travi Army. You're one of the Travi now. We've officially drafted you. If you don't understand the Travi, there's like six of us that are named Travis that are out there. So Plain Reality, you are now Travis the Sixth. Okay. Travis, the, not the Sith, the Sixth. And it says, and yes, I would take a sky over over high point too. Well, well, Ooh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Plain reality, well, Travis, five words, buddy. Yeah, Tr Travis, don't, <laughs> don't worry about that because now that we got Mike out there, we got four or five mics now. Uh oh, we got the we got the Mike eye and the Trav eye. No, so the Trav eye collective no, is still growing. Says King. No, no, Travis, Travis, <laughs> it's the Mike militia. The Mike militia. The Mike militia. The, the, the Trav eye army. You the can army. have the collective. The, the Trav eye collective. There's the Mike militia. Well, the, the Mike Militia is just a splinter cell off of the Travi Collective. They're actually part of us, but they just don't admit it. So, um, yeah, Okay, SAR Arms. Okay, SAR Arms, another option. Like I said before, they're very similar to the EAA witnesses that are out there. I know Ghost Tactical has tested a lot of SARs, and I think um, – who else has done it? Gun Snob or – I'm not sure. No, people that have – what's that? Obnoxious one does Obnoxious a lot of turkey friends. We're waiting for him to get his turkey citizenship at this point. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the SAR Arms B6 is $299. At one point, those were like a $225 9mm uh, before the prices went crazy. But guys, you got a lot of options out there. So if you want something, you might just have to hunt around a little bit online. As much as I'd like to see a shop locally, you know, these will have a lot of these are going to be shipped to an FFL anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, no, I mean, there's there's a lot of great options out there for tons of shotguns and bolt actions that you can find. You know, obviously, if you look around at your local stores, you can find those options, too. But we're, you know, again, focusing on the handguns today. I'm um, seeing if we get closer to 355, if there's anything that pops up. Ooh, the DPMS full auto BB gun. There you go. There you go. You can throw 50, 50, 50 rounds of stainless steel BBs downrange at somebody. You, think you're, you shoot your eye out, kid. Exactly. And unfortunately, the high point carbines are now getting up into like the three hundred seventy five dollar range. Where at one point, I think I was seeing the ten millimeters for like two seventy nine before all this craziness happened. Okay, so the Stoger STR nine, fifteen rounds for three nineteen. The Bursa BP nine concealed carry. I think um, Midnight Range has a has a BP nine, doesn't he? If I'm not mistaken. So that's another option too for you. Uh, Stoger STR9 was the one I was talking about earlier. They got the full size of the compact. The compact is only 10 rounds. I don't know if they make like a 12 for Freedom Free States or not, but STR9 is for 15. Smith & Wesson 36 is 38 special revolvers for 319. So, oh, you're probably going to start to, yeah, you start to run into Bursa territory when you get into the $320 range. So there's, you got quite a few options out there. I mean, you got a lot of different different things you can do. Let's take it up to 350 and just see if there's anything magical that pops. I was kind of hoping maybe we'd see some police trade-ins at that price, but and you really got to check around because, like on Gun Broker, there's people that are selling you know G3Cs for 325, where you know you can get those for 260 normally. So, hey, Travis. yo, what's up? Yeah, I, I lost signal there for a couple of minutes. Uh, Dude, it's, can you can you boost your volume? It's really really quiet. Can you get your signal up at all? Or okay, or how's that? Oh, Dude, that's awesome, man. You're good. Yep. All right. Um, just a couple of notes on that 762 by 25. Mm -hmm. I've got one, and it shots re really well. But Starline makes brass for that, and um, you got to be careful if you get a hold of the imported stuff because there's two different types. There's stuff that's made for the Takarev, and there's stuff that's made for the machine gun. That machine okay. gun ammunition is a lot more uh, stout, a lot more powerful. Uh -huh. And you'll do some damage to that CZ if you use a lot of it. But I I've bought had... I bought Cellier and Below or PPU yep. 762 yep. by 25 Toke Toke yep. Red. So is that that's what you want, right? Yes. Okay, and I ran that through a CZ 52. So I mean, that's if I go back on my that's... video, it was either is either Cellier and Below or PPU, and it's about twenty two dollars a box. It's not cheap, but yep. uh, you can get it. It is out there. Oh yeah, and I cast a nice little 75 grain bullet round nose for that too. And so you do reload your own then for it? You do oh, yeah. reload your own? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Squib Loader 1996 says Ruger 1022 for $250 and LGS. Um, let's see. BX25 plus 22LR out of an 18-inch barrel equals better than a pointy stick. I don't disagree with you on that. Less than $300. So there's an option for you. 
Uh, what else we got here? Seeing if there's anything else. I'm starting to creep up into the $349 range. Oh, here we go. Here we go, guys. Okay. I'm seeing $349, Smith & Wesson, LE Trade-In, 40 Smith & Wesson, Night Sides, 3 Mags, $349. With the case, the instructions, these look really – this might be the, the buy I'd recommend. Um, I know we're talking 40 but in some places, 40 is still readily available, a lot more available than 9 millimeter. These look pretty good. These are being these are being sold by the 10X Sport Shop. Buy now, 349. You can bid on it. They're 205. The night sites are probably going to be burned out at this point. Twenty six dollars for shipping. And how many mags do you come with? Three. Three. Wow. Usually you're lucky if you get one. You get the case. You get all the manuals with it. It's not like a factory reefer, but it's it's decent. You got the oh, and it even has the grip panels on the back, the interchangeable grip panels. Yeah, that's not a bad buy at all. That, let me put that over in the internal, and you guys can check that out. Because I've been thinking about doing a 40 for a while, looking for a 40, because uh, ammo is I – mean, I've got plenty of 40, but, you know, it's, it's, it tends to be a little more readily available. So I've uh, got two of them. <laughs> uh, the M&P 40s? I got the M&P 40, and I've also got a Taurus PT-101 in 40. Oh, stainless yeah, I, with the yep, – uh, yep. Aluminum lower. Boy, that thing is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got the 2.0. I've got a small in. laser underneath it, too. Yeah, the M I love my MMPs. Um, I have I have two MMPs of 40. One's the Shield, the first gen, and then the other one's the 2.0 Compact mm -hmm. in 40. Oh, okay. nice. Nice. And that's, Rich, that's pretty much what you have in most of your pistols, right? That's what you tend to run. I have three pistols in 40, and then my son has a 1911 in 40. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, I'm seeing the SAR basic nine millimeter for 349. I would go for that M and P any day because of accessories, magazine springs. I would do that M that the M and P would be my three hundred forty nine dollar gun choice if I was gonna get one. Now granted that's about fifty bucks more than you would have paid for one, you know, say three or four months ago. But given the conditions and the situation, that would be a solid choice. Get a new recoil spring for it or a, get a new guide rod replacement for it, uh, with recoil spring, and I think you'd be sitting pretty good. Uh, EA uh, Hearsan or Gearsan nine millimeters for three forty nine seventeen plus one. That's decent. And we still oh here we go. So we've got the Sky CPX two with the with the Crimson Trace laser on the top for three forty nine. I have not seen one of those for sale. I didn't realize they were that expensive, but you are getting an RMR ready slide, and it is with the red dot for three forty nine Crimson Trace. So that's one thing it's got going for it. Um, Makarovs, you might be able to find yourself. Here's the CZ eighty two. And nine by eighteen macro for three forty nine. Taurus nine forty two. Now it's twenty two LR. Yeah, the nice thing about those CZ eighty twos is they're not a single stack like most of the macro style pistols. That is a double stack. Oh, nice. What's is it ten? Ten plus one or what? No, it's like uh, thirteen if I remember right. Oh, okay. So that'd be a nice option too. And you can get replacement springs for those. I mean, parts are not that hard to find. Because I, when I got deep into the Makarov, I was looking at all these replacement parts and all these different models. Um, more SAR 9s for 349 M&P Bodyguard 380 yeah, Trigger plain, on that's a little bit tricky. Yeah. Plain Reality is asking where you found that uh, M&P at. Uh, just go to gunbroker.com and then filter the prices to 349 and then go about... I don't even know what page I'm on here. I am on page 40. So I'm if you you know if you crank it up and I'm looking at 24 items per page. So yeah, if you go to gunbroker.com, do the buy it now, all guns search, and then limit the price to 350 in the filtering options. It'll pop up. Mine's page 40. Yeah, so you that's, could probably you could probably uh, type in out the where it's only 40 Smith and Wesson caliber sure. looking for. It there well. you go. A lot of Bursa BP9Cs are popping up at 350. Remington R51 pass. Uh, let's see here, and that's that's. Then we start to get into. Well, we're still three. It's amazing what you can find at the 350 dollars level, but you got to watch out because a lot of these items are available for less too. So, yeah. So there you go. So that's yeah. what we have. That's what I'm seeing yeah, so but, far. So. Uh, yeah. But again, you also have to do you figure whether there's you know tax shipping, mm -hmm. and you also have to account. For the FFL fee, if your FFL charges you. you oh, no, definitely. I, I even said you're looking at probably another $50, plus you got to get ammo so, if you want extra mags. So, so, but, so when, you, when you put ship, shipping, FFL fee, and even taxes in there, it's probably, you know, $50 is 
is you know the minimum. I'd say seventy five dollars on top of that is I, probably I have rarely, dude. I've hardly ever seen shipping of more than thirty dollars on anything on Gun Broker, and a lot of these places well, have free shipping though. So I say that because some FFLs do charge like twenty five or fifty mm-hmm. bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it depends on who you go through. Right. Um, I know. Let's see, shipping on PSA for my complete pistol lower was only seventeen dollars, so that's right. not bad. Right, and, and the shipping shipping usually isn't isn't what gets you. It's usually the tax. Or, yep. the, uh, or, yep. or, or the or the FFL transfer. There's still a few places I bought from through Gun Broker that they don't charge sales tax for Nebraska because they don't have enough business in Nebraska to just to have to follow the regulations for the state. Right. Um, so th- there's a lot with the South, the same with South Carolina too. So. Mm-hmm. And again, don't forget to hit the local mom and pop gun shops. Hit the use browse the use counters. Take cash with you and negotiate yeah. down on the price. I mean, you might be able to get something for hundred dollars under the asking price for fifty under. Just, just whip the cash out and say you want three fifty. I'll give you three hundred right now. Deal. Done. Just don't accept. Don't 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 expect change in the shortage. Yeah. <laughs> here's here's kind of an interesting deal. I'm looking at a, a sixteen inch five five six NATO midlink gas upper with sights and an angled foregrip for two seventy nine. That's not bad. I'm actually in the market for an upper right now because I got that new lower coming. So um, I don't know which way to go. I'm really tempted to do the Delton. Where are you, where are you seeing upper. that? Where this are you seeing that? Gun dot deals. No bull carrier link, group and no charging me. handles. That's link another hundred dollars. Link hmm? me, Travis. Link me, buddy. Go link in yourself. <laughs> All right, here. I'll put this on the internal so you guys can check it out. Lots of we're just we're just we're just checking everything out today, aren't we? Where's how do you paste? Yeah. So, and just copy paste. I'm trying to. There you go. There's paste. Okay. All right. You're you you teach computers. You know this. Ah, it's too damn early right now. I'm tired. <laughs> you have coffee. I've had two cups and I'm still lagging right now. I apologize. <sighs> I apologize. All these great gun deals has just got me overwhelmed. I'm just overwhelmed. I, I know. A, I know. I need, a, I need a moment. Wow, that is actually Actually, a good shut deal. up. Okay, good. I'm ready. Okay, good. Let's do this. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I need a moment. No, I'm just messing with you, dude. Um. But no, no, seriously, though, guys, if so you look around, there's a lot of great deals out there to be had. Uh, if you have any gun show, you know, a lot of people go to gun shows and they complain about the prices. Have you ever negotiated with cash? You might be surprised. You might be able to pull off a good deal at a gun show, especially if I'm not saying the sales are going to be slow at gun shows. But there's a lot of things when you go to the gun shows, especially if you follow the circuit, you see a lot of the vendors with a lot of the same inventory. And sometimes it doesn't change a whole lot. You might be able to make a, get a really good deal on something. Um, what do we have here? Oh, that's the one that I pasted. So, yeah, so we got a lot of great options out there, everybody. Uh, Bursa Thunder 380 is under 350. Yeah, Bursa Thunders. I I can't speak to the reliability. I know they've been around for a long time. Some people have complained about frames cracking, but I don't know. I really like the, the Bursa Thunder Combat 380. That's a cool one that they sell. It's all black with uh, with OD green grips, and it's kind of got like a melted frame and, and features for easy draw and conceal. Um. Yeah, a lot of guys are out there talking about ammo prices right now. Yeah, you can find them. Burst. One of those bursts uh, comes with a 15-round magazine. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. They've got the high-capacity. Well, they, I think they yeah. call it the high-capacity model, like the high-cap or something. I think they actually call it that. I mean, to me, it's standard capacity. Whatever mag comes with that gun is the standard capacity, but they do make the 380 with the higher-capacity Taurus actually makes a bunch of 380 models for local consumption in Brazil for domestic production. And you cannot get those in the U.S. They make some really neat ones. Like they make some models that we don't have here. I really wish they sold them here. Like they do have some, uh, I think they have one that almost looks like a Beretta 92, but it's chambered in 380, but it's got like a 15 or 17 round magazine. So, and cause down there, they're just starting to ease restrictions now. So civilians can order, can um, purchase nine millimeter. So yeah, lots of good not, stuff. Not just nine millimeter, just you know, guns in general too. Mm-hmm. Definitely, and, and a lot. A lot of people are getting into their shooting sports down there too. Because I, I read, good. I read an article about that, and they're 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 actually just they're loving it. Is it their president that's starting to ease restrictions on handgun ownership, or what? Yes, yeah, yes. Really, we, yeah. we, Travis, we covered this on hit or miss, you know, a long <laughs> while ago that he he eased restrictions, and you know now we're starting to see some of the results of the restrictions. And unlike unlike the antis uh, on the other side in their country saying, "Oh no, it's going to be the wild wild west." Guess what? It's not the wild wild west. Uh, an unarmed it's society is the wild wild west. Yeah, go look at some yeah. of the places that have the most heavily regulated areas in our country. I mean, and uh, just look at the riot cities. You probably have more people getting killed every day than we had in the wild, wild west. Okay, so yeah, that's right. Yeah, Brazil so let's let's not even call it that anymore. <laughs> yeah, the crime yeah. level in Brazil 
and people getting killed by the gangs was insane, which is one of the reasons why he started easing up the gun laws down there so people could protect themselves. What, what country was that? Was it like Argentina or Venezuela where if you would go out and you'd go bag drug lords, they would give you a reward for it? They had open season on, on drug drug dealers in their country. They had an open policy. If you would get like a $500 reward if you shot and brought in a – or if you either killed or captured some of their – I don't know. You remember that? Do you remember hearing about that? There was some criticism for the president. He just said that if you know anybody that – which is crazy because, I mean, you might have people just going nuts on everybody and not even knowing what – you know. Well, I thought he was a drug dealer, you know. Um, I don't know, man. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Kingfin says the Wild West wild, the wild West really wasn't all that wild. That's what I've been told. And I live in the middle of Nebraska. So, uh, all right, guys. I think we're going to go ahead and call it. It's 934. Hopefully, we put some ideas in your head if you're looking for a handgun or you know somebody who's looking for one. Lots of options. Always start at the local mom and pop shop. See what they can get for you. See what they have in stock. Otherwise, you can always order online and go through the transfer and give that mom and pop shop the business. Keep looking around for ammo. Um, you know, do what you can. I've been stocking up for a long time. G Web says I quit buying ammo years ago. It's way cheaper to have guns now. <laughs> uh, this is true, man. Um, but in the meantime, just just kind of keep looking around, guys. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and call it episode 151. Let's go ahead and let the panel say a few final words, and we'll see who is joining us today, and we will go from there. So, Rich White, anything you want to say before we go? Yeah, just be sure to check out uh, This Week Unloaded tomorrow night on the Unloaded Media channels. Start time somewhere between 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern. And like I said, we don't know usually what we're going to talk about before the show goes live. We just come up with whatever and we talk about some interesting stuff. So uh, cool, cool. check that out. And uh, be sure to go over and watch the series I did on the Wild West guns. Mm -hmm. It's Wild West stuff, more Wild West stuff. Even more Wild West stuff, and yes, even more more Wild West stuff. If I remember right, third <laughs> title West, on Wild West stuff. Yeah, cute, talk, right? Yeah, yeah. We covered just about every type of handgun, rifle, the shotguns that was available back then. So uh, go check that out. Get a good primer for yourself on the type of guns that were used, and some of the stuff that they had might actually surprise you. So um, yeah, make sure you go check out those ser that series of um, shows that we did. And, uh, yeah, but thanks for the invite. So you did an episode on cap and ball revolvers. And rifles. And rifles. Would you be willing to school me on cap and ball revolvers next week? Will you be around? Yeah, I could be around. Okay. Okay. Because I was actually – I was about to buy one. The, the local Shields had a cap and ball revolver complete set for three forty nine. You got everything with it that you needed to get started, except for, uh, I think, the primers. That was the only thing that you needed, to percussion caps or whatever. So caps. Was it traditions? Yeah, it was in the traditions. Yeah, they have a couple traditions kits, and then they had they had the complete 349. I don't know if it was like the Colt, was it Colt Navy or something? I'm not sure exactly what the model was. It was a brass framed revolver, so I don't think you could swap out a cylinder or anything like that. No, like we don't. Before. Yeah, yeah, it's not recommended with the brass cylinders. You want if you're gonna swap out the cylinder for one of the center fired cylinders, you want the uh, steel frame. Okay, okay, but for somebody who just wants to get into cap and ball, you know, it's kind of a fun way to do it. So. Um, but, yeah, so let's plan on cap and ball revolvers for next week. I need to educate myself on those a little bit. But, I mean, you know, being it's a black powder concept, I I do understand the basics of it. But as for the history of the guns and stuff, I just – the the Wild West gun idea, you know, Wild West gun history is still fairly new to me. Um, you know, just when you really start to get into the, the development and the models and who carried what and when and the changes that were made, I mean, it's a whole nother uh, school that's really interesting to learn about. But I'm just I'm just not, not too educated on it, so – uh, which is good. We'll have that discussion. I think we'll see what's out there because, again, we had a great black powder discussion last week. If you guys missed it, um, we did get into the basics of black powder rifles and we looked at the models that were out there and the different options and your powder options and bullet options and stuff like that. And a couple of people have told me that because of that episode, they went, and went out and bought black powder rifles that day. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I still want to get a Traditions Kentucky. I want to get Traditions Kentucky percussion cap. That's what I, if you ever see one hanging above my head, you know I got one. So, yeah. And if you go and watch the, um, the video we did on the uh, not the cap and ball revolvers, but the center fire revolvers, mm -hmm. you'll find just how far back the lineage of the 44 Magnum actually goes. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Some of these rounds go back like 762 by 54. <laughs> People don't realize we're talking some of these are some of the first, you know, uh, center fire cartridges for those firearms, which is just amazing. And the designs are still around, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. the lineage of the 44. Magnum goes back to the late 1860s. Dude, that's crazy, man. And that stuff is still in production. Still a good round. Still a great round. So, all right. Uh, Night Strike, anything you want to say before we go? 
Uh, yeah, we're using uh, gun, uh, gun tube chamber for these chats. Uh, mm-hmm. Hit or miss, Tuesday nights, 9 o'clock. And uh, Travis, you know, does Caliber Corner using Gun Tube Chamber. So if you like if you like what we're doing and what you see, go to store.guntube.org and uh, help us out by uh, buying a bottle of uh, CLP. We Gun still have we still have tons of that available. If you haven't gotten one yet, if you wanted one and we went out of stock, we have them in stock now. Please go and get one bottle or two because I looked at it the other day and Break Free CLP is like ten ninety nine at Walmart right now. And, and if you, you know, if you, and here's and the thing. Walmart, Walmart is eating eating the the cost for shipping, but it's, mm-hmm. but for shipping like an individual pack like that, it would cost like four or five dollars. If you go to the Break Free web website, if you want the liquid CLP, it's ten dollars for a two ounce bottle, and they want ten dollars for shipping. You're doing a four ounce bottle for how much delivered? Twelve. 14, 14, 14. So you can save five bucks. It goes a long ways. I, I cleaned three guns with it so far. They look fine. They look great. And I've barely even touched the surface where with my Kansas CLP, I just tend to burn through that stuff so quick and it's expensive. It's like eight or $9 a can. Yeah. And when you do as much cleaning as I do, man, you go through a lot of it. So yep. yeah, so, cool, man. I'll put okay. the link out there in the chat. Okay. Defense dad, anything you want to add before we go, buddy? Yeah, thanks for having me. Sorry I had to join late. Um, oh, don't worry about it. It's cool to have you here, man. I've got a few videos I put out lately. I've got a new series that's going to be coming out called Budget vs. Beauty. Uh, my mm. alter eagle may show up again, but yeah, <laughs> just check it out. That was awesome, dude. I love the split screen when you did that. Or no, that was actually your alter ego sitting in the same room with you, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We'll go with that. Movie magic, <laughs> movie magic. No, man, you got a great channel. Defense Dad's editing is 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 on point. The music is great. I'm jealous. I'm just not that creative when it comes to, to making videos. I, I wish I had some of that talent. And you're doing that all on your phone. Is that right? Yep. Dude, that's, that is nuts. That is nuts. I seriously am trying too hard. <laughs> that is awesome, man. But yeah, no, no, really, dude, check out Defense Dad's channel. It's a great channel. I want you guys to get over there, subscribe. Check out our, our If You Can Only Have One Gun series. And if you decide you want to make a video – Call out another uh, three channels on, on on YouTube and say, hey, I want to see what is your one gun option. There's a chance they might have already made a video, so they would let you know. But just pick out three different gun channels that you like. Or if you got some buddies that have firearms and they want to start making gun videos, say, hey, if you can only have one gun, what would it be? And that was a, that was a very fun video. I Like I said, I spent way more time thinking about it than I did actually uh, actually filming it. So that's cool, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. And single shot. Anything you want to say before we go? Yeah, check out my channel, folks. I've got uh, some pretty interesting uh, content on there. Thanks for the invite. And uh, I I have got that uh, uh, favorite one gun uh, thing on the works. I'm oh. going to try to get a couple, three uh, of the others uh, okay. done before I do that one. It's been raining really hard all the way up through to Portland, Maine here so far. Cloudy and it's Lot up a little bit, but it hasn't uh, lot up a whole lot. So this, this is that, a, dumb, a dumb question for you: Is this the remnants of the hurricane that just made its way up the coast, and you guys are catching the tail end of it, or not? Or is this just I, normal? I think so. I think Maybe. So. Yeah. 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 You guys always get battered on the east yeah. coast, man. Jesus. Yeah. 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 This is the one that fizzled out. Between that, your nor'easters. Good God, man! I would not want to live there. I mean, I love that weather, but I hate being out in it. I love it, but not having to be out in it. You know, when you got to go travel or you yeah, got to do or you got to work in it. God, the headaches from it would just be would just be yeah. yeah Good so, day to be back. home casting bullets, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> drinking solid, drinking coffee all day. Yeah, we're yep. getting here with this rain. That rain here too. It's been a solid seventy-two degrees and rain since yesterday afternoon. I saw Ghost Tacticals video. He posted a video where they had tornado warnings going on. His trees were just going all over the place. It's like, oh man, I feel like I'm back in Nebraska when I watch yeah, that video. Well, I'm in Nebraska. The remnants of that one that hit Louisiana. We're getting the one that fizzled out. Nobody. Yeah, right now Missouri's getting smacked. Oh yeah. Oh my God. The East Coast is ugh. Well, everything I'm from basically a- everything from Connecti Cut all the way up to sorry <laughs> Connecticut up to Tra Rivieres. I can't speak Quebec City. There, that whole storm, man. Just. You guys are getting yep. boomeranged right now. Good. Yeah, they, we're, I'm at 60, 62 degrees right now. We're at and, 65. Uh, yeah. The uh, the wind is blowing, so mm-hmm. we've got some wind up here. I plan on doing a couple things. I don't have to leave out again until Monday, so headed for Kentucky this time around. Sweet. Kentucky. That's a fun place to go, man. I, I stayed there when I stayed in Paducah. That's like right across the river from Illinois, and it's amazing. Yeah. 
you cross the river and it's just amazing how the dialect just disappears at the gas station <laughs> across the river. It's like, hi everybody, how you doing? You go across and it's like, hey, welcome to Illinois. You know, it's like it's like literally just like nine day difference between those two. Paducah yeah. and the next town over in Illinois. Have you guys ever been to Paducah, Kentucky? Yep. Paducah? Yeah, we stayed yep. there. Man, that was a great place, yeah. man. People were so friendly and stuff. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. I, I've Louisville been all I've been all over Kentucky. I went to high school in Louisville. I like Kentucky fried chicken. I'm looking oh, at the yeah. radar. Good Lord, the whole East Coast from, like you were saying, up in Canada and Maine and the U.S., all the way down to North Carolina. It's all the way from Connecticut, all, all the way to New Brunswick, Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah South Carolina is okay, so, you know. There you go. You guys survived. You guys made it. We made it. We made Good. it. Do you guys catch anything at all for weather? I know you were talking in we, one of your – it's, yeah, I've been I've been getting a lot of all rain off and on. One day it'd be sunny, the next couple days it'd be rainy. Sunny, yeah, welcome rainy, to Nebraska, right, Rick. Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, we've had more rain than sun, and it almost feels like Seattle, minus the riots. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's hey, uh, Doesn't Seattle have like three hundred days of rain a year? Yeah. The, uh, the state up here have got the uh, road signs, the electronic road signs. They put yeah. up some pretty pretty neat quotes on those sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nebraska. And, uh, too. Yeah. Yeah. This this one here that I just passed, it says, beat the heat, belt your seat. <laughs> oh, the heat, the cops. I was yeah. like, it doesn't have to do with temperature. I'm like, oh, the cops. They've done, like, some Star Wars quotes on the Nebraska ones before. It's like, you know. Well. Like use the force and stay in your lane or something like that. It's like stay, use the force and stay on target or something. I don't know what the yeah yeah. yeah. Oh man, it, it, it's, it's it's better than what some people did in Texas one time. They yep. they they didn't they didn't uh, change the the password on it and somebody hacked into one of those signs <laughs> and it said zombies ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you that? We covered that. And what's scared is there's probably people ignorant enough to think that that is true. So you know. <laughs> oh man all right so let's see who is joining us today again shout out to ss pond for their support of caliber corner as well as the travis p11 channel uh rich white was out there g webs was out there plain reality hey man welcome to the channel go back we got three seasons of caliber corner you can go back to go back and watch if you got nothing else going on uh gun snob is out there what is up snob we miss you today buddy uh roy hills out there night strike ones over there and over here poor conservative dm foz kingpin in the house uh, Fiend Dog 27, Atypical Gunner, uh, J Monty 1738. Guys, we're having a good conversation today. Gun Loving Grandpa, Ozzy Orsborn's out there too. Mike's out there joining in. Uh, let's see, Patriot in the Dark, Two Live Moose, Squib Loader 1996. Good crowd hanging out this morning. Thank you guys very much. Dirt Bike Chopper 2012, Taurus Fanboy. Taurus Fanboy. I miss my witness, P. Carey. Oh, man, go get another one. Go get another one if you can find one. Jason Stewart's joining in. Mike's out there today. Good crew. A lot of people h- hanging out here. So next week we'll have a little cap and ball revolver discussion. We'll kind of get into the history of some of these original Old West guns and uh, talk a little bit. Talk a little bit of black powder. Otherwise, I think that's about it. So I do apologize if I missed anybody. Agorizer, E Rock, Fluffy 10 millimeter Jeep guy in the house. I apologize, guys. I'm tired this morning. Mr. Trek Fan Dan in the house. Two Gun Kitty the Catnip Outlaw. Snake Doctor 78. Uh, I think that's pretty much about it. Gizzard Gary. Gizzard Gary. Oh, Gizzard Gary did. He did drop out, but he was with us earlier. So, Gary, thank you for being here. Pond Woods in the house. And I think we'll stop there. So, anyway, this has been episode number 151. Uh, For those of you that are curious, we will do the Patreon drawing for the month of September. Uh, This week, it's going to be early. August was very late because I was waiting to get the hookup from SS Pond. I actually picked up uh, a a little special little knife combo that I'm going to give away. Got a lot of goodies from SS Pond we're going to throw in the giveaway this month. So, go over to my Patreon page. It's TravisP11. If you sign up as a patron, it's a buck a month if you're interested. And all that money goes back into Guns and Ammo for the channel. And uh, we do a monthly drawing where we give away a lot of goodies. Um, Abuse Files Toolman won last month, and I sent him a huge box full of stuff. We're going to make it just as good this month. And uh, I think it's going to be a good time, so check it out. And I do post my videos early over on Patreon, and I do put messages out there for my patrons. You get a Travis P11 sticker, and uh, and that's about it. But uh, otherwise, I think that's it, guys. So Caliber Corner 151, thanks for being here. Panel, thank you guys for being here. Check out the panel's channel. All the panelists have great channels. they got great content. 
Uh, and I think that's it. So I want you guys to have fun, be safe, and as you know, we will talk to you soon. See you later, everybody. Shut up, be infringed. Never be infringed. Never be infringed. All right. And get off the phone.